What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode of the Smoking Tire is brought to you by Vivid Seats. You know, we all love a night out, whether it's seeing our favorite band in person, going to a race, or being there in the crowd to cheer on our favorite team. With Vivid Seats, you can attend the concert, show, race, or sporting event of your choice at a great price. Vivid Seats is the top source for tickets for all the live events you want to go to. You can sort by price or look for seats in the section or row of your choice. To make things even better, Vivid Seats is giving listeners an exclusive promo code for new customers to receive 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats to save them even more money. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the Vivid Seats app. Use promo code TIRE for 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats. Every purchase is backed by a 100% buyer guarantee. From the biggest concerts and games to the hottest theater and more, Vivid Seats has it all. Download the app and enter promo code TIRE for 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats. Make a memory that lasts a lifetime and let Vivid Seats help you get to your favorite live event. That's 10% off with code TIRE when you download the Vivid Seats app. Uh, We are also brought to you by Continental Belts. When you're under the hood, you ever notice how often you see Continental Belts? There is a reason for that. Continental is one of the world's largest original equipment suppliers for the automotive industry. Automakers around the world insist on Continental for original equipment belts. Uh, The U.S., all the big three, BMW, Volkswagen, over 30% of all new vehicles sold in North America. You know what that says? It says Continental knows original equipment because they are original equipment. Continental's OE Technology Series Multi-V belts for the automotive aftermarket are precision engineered for perfect fit, form, and function with a true OE pedigree. They're the belts engines already know, so you can confidently spec Continental's Multi-V belts. There's one for for 98% of the vehicles on the road today. You might not know it, but Continental is also a leader in automotive technology, electronic components for things like autonomous driving and accident-free zones. That focus on innovation is in every product they make, including the OE Technology Series aftermarket belts. Check them out. Just check them out. That's all we're asking. Just check them out. And lastly, we're brought to you by Rad Power Bikes. This is a consumer direct electric bike company producing five unique models of electric bicycles. Because Rad Power Bikes is a consumer direct brand, buyers get a premium electric bike without paying the huge markups caused by dealers and third party retailers, priced at often less than half of the price of comparable bikes on the market because dealer and retail markups are completely cut out. On top of their already awesome price, This coming Cyber Monday, which is November 26th, Rad Power Bikes is making it even easier to get people riding. There are deals on all models of electric bikes with up to $400 off per model. One day only sale on Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday also includes free shipping on all electric bikes to the lower 48 states. Save you some extra cash there. At 750 watts of power, all five models have the most powerful motor an e-bike can have while maintaining a street legal status. No license, registration, or insurance required. You can finance your bike for as low as 0% APR. Just about $100 a month can get you riding. All five models will reach 20 miles an hour with zero pedaling. All five models give riders the choice to ride pedal three with the throttle, utilize five levels of pedal assist for added boost, or any combination of the two. You can travel between 40, uh, 20 and 40 miles on a single charge. I've ridden these things. They are really fun. You can go quite a bit faster than you can go on a normal bike, and you can use them as fully uh, under power so you can get to work or whatever without being all sweaty from pedaling. Uh, visit www.radpowerbikes.com slash podcast. That's radpowerbikes.com slash podcast to learn more, and don't forget to shop their Cyber Monday sale on November 26th to save big. Okay, on this episode of the show, uh, I have been waiting to get Brian Scotto on the podcast for like 
three years now. Uh, this dude is a, a really, really smart guy. He's been around a really long time. He's the creative director uh, at Hoonigan Industries, which means he's in charge of the um, – Jim Connor films, but also their video series over there, all the merch, all Ken Block's branding, the clothes, this t-shirt ideas. I mean, he's all of it is going through his head all the time. Plus, he's got some crazy car builds he's always working on. Um, and even before that, he was in the magazine business with Zero to Sixty magazine and, uh, and and even Donk Box and Bubble. He's just a really interesting guy. We have a really great conversation. Brian Scotto on the Smoking Tire podcast. The like, I don't mind like going to a car show and running into people who watch us on the show and then yeah. talking to them and like i reply to my dms i do too yeah and I a, do lot, too, but a to lot of people to a don't. certain extent yeah I, it, it gets a little out of control it can sometimes. get out of hand yeah it, i i don't mind i really like it brian scotto on the smoking tire podcast this is the show right hey, we got good yeah. audio everyone everyone hi hello live folks welcome what's up everybody sorry we started a little late he was fucking late because he sucks no that is true i traffic. totally suck when dude I... the traffic today you are all fully forgiven why is that it's Bro, weird how that happens in L.A. I don't know, but the traffic today is uh, not to make it the L.A. conversation where we bitch about traffic, but it's worse yeah. than normal today. If for I the, drove a car instead of a scooter over here, I would have been an angry young boy. By the way, for those of you who don't live in Los Angeles and have never had a business meeting in Los Angeles, this is how every meeting <laughs> yeah. begins. The first five minutes, people talk about traffic, yep. and then you continue on with your meeting. Totally. Because a business meeting in L.A., if it's not in your office, it's half your fucking day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my agent, you know Hans mm -hmm. Schiff, right? My agent at CAA in Century City. I got an. I guess if I have a meeting with yeah. him, that's half my, half a day. Well, the worst thing for us is we're in Long Beach. Yeah, you're. And in, someone would be like, "Hey, can you come over to Burbank?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, no." Can you, you send help, a, you have helicopter? a helicopter? <laughs> yeah, or a fucking catapult. <laughs> yeah. By the way, can we carry on your show? Yes. All right, cool. Someone made a little tic-tac-toe board of podcast tropes, and they were like, today I feel like a dick, and made like all these, this bingo game board of podcast tropes, and one of them was, can I curse on this show? And it there's you can play along at That's home. Fun. It was, was really yeah. funny. It was only about, only about five of the 25 were guilty of on this show, so I think it's pretty good. I'll be honest, though. I've been trying to curse less. Why? Um, because our audience is actually really young. Yeah. And so this happened with Hurt and I. When we first launched on YouTube, like we cursed all the time and like yeah. cursed like like really bad sexual innuendos like not like like the jokes i won't tell my mom and my mom has told me <laughs> some great like some great filthy jokes but it's like that next level yeah and i was kind of of the me mentality of like who cares like it's youtube that's what youtube's about and then Ken and then uh hurt and i were at an event and a seven-year-old kid came up to us and was like i watch every one of your shows uh -huh. and i and he's like and i I fucking love shit car. <laughs> and I was just like, I fucking, oh, I fucking man. love shit car. I was like, oh, that sucks. You know, I get, I, I, you guys have a much, bec I guess because Ken is pretty clean. Yeah, Ken's, Ken is, Ken's a, a as squeakier a, as version As a person of us. is pretty clean. Yeah. And the things he does, I mean, aside from shredding tires yeah. and all that, yeah. you guys are pretty grimy. He's we're, pretty clean. We're, we're definitely his band of grimy misfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I don't I I really reject the <laughs> you need to be kid friendly. It's, For me personally, I'll get a letter I, from a fuck. I'll get comments. We from still curse. I mean, our, go. I watch my show with your fucking kid, and I go, you're torturing your kid, yeah. <laughs> your or kid. you're raising your kid right. Yeah, so. I used to get yelled at for cursing a lot. Guess what? Now it's my job. So yeah. <laughs> I don't actually ever remember getting in trouble for cursing. Oh, I definitely yeah. do. I grew yeah, up in a Catholic family though, so I definitely got hit for like taking the Lord's name in vain. Did you get hit thing. for it? You got hit for oh, saying yeah. God damn and shit? Yeah, not Rulers? like that, but grandma was more worried about mm -hmm. that. My parents were. My parents were extremely lenient about all the things that they should have been hard on me on uh -huh. and extremely hard on me for all the things they should have been lenient. Really? About. Like what? Like I got grounded for two weeks once for sleeping above the covers. Fucking my come dad's mil on. my dad's like yeah, come ex-military. On. Come what? on, really? Yeah. Or like I, I don't like know. Your I, gig line a, was off. A, and yeah, exactly. Or like what? as a kid, I would. Uh, Where was this happening? I grew up in Queens. Oh, so okay. I grew up in Queens, New York, and um, my dad was. My dad did you know did time in Vietnam and military and did some like drill sergeant stuff. So he has a little bit of that about him. And did he's he just see real Arlie Army type? Like, uh, he could be. Yeah. He could be. My my father is. Um, I love my dad, and uh, my my dad and his father, my grandfather, is the reason I'm into cars. But um, 
my dad has uh, I like to say because he's he's kind of a quiet guy like he's not like me like I don't shut the fuck up like yeah. you and I this no, is gonna yeah. be a hard podcast we're just gonna talk over each other That's it's okay. gonna be like that right <laughs> there you for me they're used to it anyway yeah so but my dad's a lot more quiet but I've always said he has like an air of violence <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah, know if you yeah. could explain that like yeah, all yeah. of my friends were scared of him and I grew yeah. up with like some thuggish kids in New York <laughs> everyone was scared of my dad like he just had this thing about him yeah you know? so like you like everyone just knew he had a gun yeah it was like, like it yeah. was like and, and he wasn't gonna shoot you with it because he'd rather pistol whip you because it's more fun <laughs> it's like that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing you know yeah so yeah did he did but did Vietnam like fuck him up no, or, no, no, okay. no. He, he got lucky he he he, he got to uh he was a scientist, okay. so and was in school uh, at the time. So he spent a lot of time, kind of on the lab side of things, and like helping defend, you know, like dealing with like chemical chemicals warfare and, and stuff. stuff like that. Yeah. So. Maybe me, my uh, great uncle dropped Agent Orange out of helicopters. It's could, not something yeah. I'm entirely proud of him doing. Seems pretty fucked up, but yeah, he really enjoyed it and yeah. went back several times to 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 do repeat tours and drop more of it. When. Uh, he he then got, shoes, everyone gets tense. He then got testicular cancer from yeah. the fucking Agent Orange. And yeah, when I named my car my Nova Napalm Nova, my dad was like, "You do know what Napalm is, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, not yeah. cool. That's not funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." I was like, "Yeah, that's not why I named it that. Actually, the na- the reason it's I'm a really just, cool name for a car." So I'll jump into the reason. So um, when Hoonigan give, first, us a, give us a picture of it. Anything we want to talk about, we can pull up pictures because it's a video show. Yay! Oh yeah, sweet. Um, Broadcasting. I mean, what do you want to talk about today? Start with Napalm Nova. It's a sure. fucking cool car. So, has the same kind of attitude as my Fox body had. Yeah. So, uh, one quick Black. thing about Napalm Nova is that uh, I grew up a German car kid, mm. right? So, I mean, yeah, VW, yeah, yeah exactly. Waterfest. Volkswagen's. And what up? You know, I think before we get too far into this, like, should we explain some of our background? Because I've known you. Now I met you in two thousand seven. About yeah, in right New when York. I right when I was launching Zero to Sixty magazine. I was gonna. I want to ask you about that because I am now getting really into print again. Like, like it's like print magazines are like the records for me. Or like VHS tapes. Are yeah, hot again. I just got this magazine called uh, The Road Rat from the yeah, UK. Oh, I, I've, I've seen it. It looks really good. It's the, a beautiful magazine. Is Lewis magazine. Hamilton on the cover? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I've it seen arrived that. today, yep. and it is spectacular as far as car magazines go. So, so I wanted to ask you about how does one go about starting a print magazine? Well, or, I started a print magazine when print still was making money. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, you know, with Zero to 60, it was really interesting because we were we kind of came in at a weird point because the magazine business had become like shill anything you can uh put it on the crappiest paper possible just as many ads as you can run and you know that was what magazines became and it was just like simple and put out and zero to 60 i think was kind of like this magazine that bridged the gap to what the magazines or like almost books are today yeah like yeah. you look at like triple zero and things mm. like that right? well triple zero is i think a great model but it's like really like oh, poor oh, yeah, and you, you know what i mean it yeah. takes itself and way too seriously that, but with zero sixty, was like we wanted to just build something that you didn't want to throw out. Yeah, and that was like we wrote like a quick little guide of like these are the things that this magazine has to be, you know. And obviously, the first one was like it had to be like it had to have attitude. It had mm-hmm. to be like a bit fuck you. It had to not be the the buff books of the time, right? You know. Yeah. And um, but one of the other was things, that your first car gig? Was you have car gigs? Well, I did. That? I I ran Rides magazine, and I did like Dunk Box and Bubble, and I, I did a bunch. Dunk I, Box and yeah, Bubble. That so was I was a great I magazine. Was, I was pretty deep in like the hip hop car world. Yeah, totally by accident. Like I grew up in New York City. Uh, I wrote graffiti when I was a kid. I got. Uh, I ended up getting a Who's job. Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> Banksy isn't Who's real graffiti, Banksy really? and Banksy doesn't want to be known as real graffiti. He's a street artist. It's yeah. like different. But um, I grew up writing graffiti and went to school for journalism. And a friend of mine was a designer uh, at a magazine called Mass Appeal. I don't know if you remember Mass Appeal. I don't. It was so it was the competitor for Vice magazine in oh, New York. Okay. Obviously, Vice did better. <laughs> Vice won. So yeah, Vice won. <laughs> Vice won that one. Um, but yeah, there you go. Donk Box and Bubble magazine. Yeah, that's, I, that's actually I, that's cover. actually I left. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it was a fun magazine to make. Oddly enough, uh, each, each feature fe- each each issue features a donk, I a box, actually, and a bubble. I actually had some really really good times uh, at that magazine. But so, long story short, uh, 
I get a magazine, I get a job at a magazine that was like primarily graffiti and culture and hip hop and all of that. And I wrote the car column because mm-hmm. I was really into cars and mm-hmm. I knew cars. And that was like, there was a whole group of like media people around that who were, um, who didn't know anything about cars. And quickly it was like, hey, can you write for my magazine? Can you write for my magazine? Like, can you do our column on this? Because like f- non car magazines, like culture magazines. Right, culture yeah. magazines. And the reason is, is because the, still to this day, the biggest advertiser in the world is automakers. Right. So if you're GQ or you're Maxim or whatever, like you still need to have a car column yeah. to help support what you're selling. So before you know it, I'm writing for Vibe, Double XL, Complex, like all these like streetwear mags in New York City. And I then I end up getting offered a job at rides, and I was like, I don't know anything about big wheels. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even like chrome. Well, like, yeah, this is like 05, right? Uh, oh three, oh four. Yeah. So it was so, really like when twenties first. Well, I mean, when wheels was, went past twenty. It was wells. the beginning of the dubs and the spree wells oh, and that man. whole thing. And what it, do you I think mean, a set of fucking real spree wells would go for right today? now? That's a I good bet question. They, you think they'd be that's expensive? Good, I bet be. they would. I actually think that that's gonna. I think it might like kind of like oddly come back like slightly ironic in yeah, some yeah. ways. Like so. whatever the next version of Radwood yeah. is will feature spree wells. And yeah. then they went the other way because those were the spinners, right? Well, then they had spinners, then they had floaters. The stayers. The floaters. <laughs> so, and then they had sploders. <laughs> Which what if you spl- yeah so You'd floaters were spinners and floaters and you just had to like move a weight and they would either float or spin so you could have like the wheels on the front floating and the oh, wheels on the back shit. spinning oh my so, god but I will say <laughs> doing a burnout with floaters is kind of cool I bet yeah, yeah. It looks pretty yeah, bad. yeah. you actually cool. don't have to slow down you you don't have to use a fast shutter no speed. no it's it's really good it works out really well so and the photo looks just like the video. <laughs> So. That's really funny. So um, yeah. Okay, so you're writing for Rides Magazine now. Yeah. So I mean, I'll fast forward this part because we we want to talk about cars and uh, this is cars. We're talking about cars. I'm, wor- I'm working for Rides and like I was a kid who grew up in New York and I wanted to be a journalist. Uh, I wanted to be like a war reporter. I, it's really weird that I got into cars. And you got your head blown off when I read. Yeah. Well, I, I, so to to put that and without putting a somber note on this, but to to put a reason to that, I was in journalism school uh, on September 11th. So oh. like, growing in, up in New York, uh, that whole thing happened, and all of like and journalism really had this crazy boom afterwards because yeah. it, it kind of really divided America in terms of the journalists who were like really trying to still tell a story versus just being like overly pro America uh-huh. and like that like there was this huge argument of what was going on and without getting into that like it was just an interesting time to watch what was happening in in journalism and instead I got into writing about exploders <laughs> that's, <laughs> instead, that's instead where it went but no this I got really heavy I got a topic we're covering I, today I got a I got into a I got into the job and I was 23 or 24 years old and like I went in for the interview and I thought they were going to offer me like an assistant editor position and they were like, you want to be the senior editor of the magazine? And I was like, <laughs> sure. What uh, do I do? Yeah. And they were like, this is a true story. So Dennis Page, who was the publisher at the magazine and like Dennis Page, he was such an asshole, but like, God bless him. Like I learned so much from him. So I walk in and like, I, I was working at Mass Appeal for like nothing. I had like a stipend that barely paid for me to get to Red Hook, Brooklyn, which by the way, like Red Hook, Brooklyn, that was before Ikea or anything that was in. It was when Red <laughs> Hook, Brooklyn Red was Hook. super <laughs> sketchy and we were next to the methadone clinic. Yeah. Like, and um, anyway, long story short, he says to me, he says, uh, well, what, what do you need? How much do you need to make? I was like, um, I don't know. I'll take like $28,000. <laughs> And he looks at me and he goes, oh, how would I give you 35 and you don't come back for a year and ask for more money? Because I had just no concept yeah, yeah, of like yeah. what people were getting paid in that field. Yeah, yeah. And I worked my ass off for that. And I lived in New York City for like no money. And yeah. I was like, I was like working another job to like pay for it and like lived above a bar, which was, has its upsides. Yeah, for sure. Except that you like spend half of your rent at, at the bar. At the bar, right. Yeah. yeah. But, uh. No, and it was a great opportunity, and it was actually like a kind of ton of fun because it was that moment. I mean, you remember SEMA in that era, yeah, when like the wheel entire hall, people were spending millions of dollars on boots, and they yeah, were having yeah. rappers come out. And I became like really good friends with Foxy Brown. <laughs> like, like I would like, cool. like Foxy would like text me and be like, "Hey, let's go get some Italian food," and she'd roll up in a Range Rover at my house in Queens in Astoria and drive me to Little Italy. That's really and funny. We, and like, it was like this really weird thing for me. Yeah, like, I, it was definitely I was. I was out of like you know 
it was I wouldn't say out of my comfort zone, but it was just something I never thought my life yeah, would you were, be. Yeah, you were the guy now. Yeah, I was like, the guy. yeah, Wyclef let me drive his McLaren. Like, Did he really? Yeah. That's I didn't, hilarious. It, it was I kinda, forgot Wyclef had a McLaren F1. Yeah, that was a, yeah. He had an F1. That wasn't some oh, fucking no, 12C yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, when I say, <laughs> when you say McLaren, period, you mean the F1. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, you have to adjust what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. You just say like a Maca or can't McLaren. can't believe you could fit in a McLaren F1. Actually, so I don't. <laughs> uh, I was only able to really I wasn't really able to drive it far because I can't get first gear to engage because uh-huh. my leg hits the, I, have the a, steering, I have that problem the with the F40 that. actually yeah. I can't so I drive can, an F40 I can start it in a second there's Wyclef and his McLaren is that a Zonda behind yeah. it yeah, yeah. actually that's from our photo shoot I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure because he oh, was it's not a Zonda it's a Ferrari right it's, it's a 360 uh, he had a Zonda at the shoot as well though um, he did, he did have a uh, Zonda yeah yeah that's I remember that oh there it is you. we can't show YouTube but he's got a red Zonda there it is how yeah, about yeah. that that's what we shot him with when we put him on the cover with the Zonda that's so. awesome White left. So yeah, and that was like a really cool time. But I really wanted to get back into like fast cars and performance cars, and that's what I loved. And you know, I uh, I grew up a Volkswagen kid, and like was, ran a car club in New York, and did all that, and was like, and my and this was like for anyone who knows Volkswagens today, like this was before like ab- airbag suspension or yeah, the word yeah. stance. This was when like they were like the little pocket rocket. When we, Jettas were boxy. Yeah, and we would, and we would go rip them in the canyons and like that was part of like you know the canyons like the wind Bear roads. Mountain. Bear Mountain. Yeah, 100% Bear Mountain. Yeah. Bear Mountain. I'm, I'm, I'm from Rye so yeah. I, I, those are my roads Bear too. Bear Mountain yeah. was where we would drive up to or Long Island. We did used to Ocean thing. Parkway. So yeah, highway we, racing on Ocean Park. We used to do this thing called uh, Full Moon Full Throttle when I did a car club, <laughs> and uh, it was a really simple idea. It was the Friday closest to the full moon. We would meet at a rest stop off of the um, the LIE, mm-hmm. which, by the way, I realized other people meet at rest stops off the LIE at midnight, <laughs> yeah. which was a whole other conversation. But um, sort of like a double bonus. Yeah, kind of worked out well. So <laughs> at um, full moons. <laughs> so we ended up. Uh, we would meet at. Uh, we would meet at midnight and full moon, full throttle was the whole concept. And uh, we would go and rip the streets of, you know, like Sounds back roads. Right. Yeah. And we would drive like all the way out to, not to Montauk, but like uh, Riverhead and yeah, shit. Yeah, like Riverhead, yeah. like that side, like the exit, at midnight, seven, exit, you could seven, probably exit cover 72. Ground pretty, pretty fast. And uh, it was a ton of fun. And like, you know, it's like surprising. Like, we never. Like we had like one accident. We did yeah. it for years, and we would run like 120 cars. Like it was <laughs> well, actually like, it was really really yeah. Lovely. It was like and it was before like Targa or any of those things. Yeah, it was yeah. just a bunch of Volkswagen. Well, kids. I would do that with New York Motor Club back in the day. Yeah, me and Larry yeah. Casilla, yep. like in 05, 06, and we would like send these kids in Hondas out ahead of us to radio back if there were cops. Right, and we'd fucking just mob like five in the morning yeah. on Sundays, like 100 cars. No one gave a shit. It was wild. Yeah. I couldn't the believe th- no one died. The thing is, when you're on like really windy roads, you're not. And and you're driving a Volkswagen, you're actually not really driving that fast. Because <laughs> yeah. this was early 2000s, right? This is like this is 2000 GIAC yeah. chip. You got to put it on. Oh you know, yeah, stick on Man, your look at you. yeah. yeah. The, and I, <laughs> I by the way, I always were. I like calling it Gaiac because it's just such a weird <laughs> way to say it. That way. But, yeah, no, you were in a Volkswagen's that era. You also knew that the H&R 6040 kit post picks. That yeah. was like the number one <laughs> post on VW Vortex back in the day. VW Vortex was an amazing forum because you go to it and it looked like you were just looking at raw HTML. It was, <laughs> it was, just, it was just like white with. Isn't text it incredible how text. how forums just never changed? But like, no, they did. No young kids are on them. It's just us. <laughs> because I noticed that, like, because I still use forums to this day yeah. about everything. And I, then I realized that, like, oh, man, we all just, like, we're still here and yeah. no one else is. We were just talking about this mm-hmm. last night with Jason Camisa, how the idea of, like, a car show, like, when we were kids, it was Chevelles and Bel Airs. And now if you go to a car show, it's Chevelles and Bel Airs. Like, it just never fucking changed with yeah. the doo-wop music and shit. The forums are that. Except, except... Radwood, yeah, yeah, is our generation yeah. car show, yeah, yeah. and like, it will it will maintain it will. Persevere. Are you going to Radwood? Oh hell yeah, December second. Not only mm-hmm. that, I'm hosting the pre Radwood party at my house. You should come. Oh, it's my sweet. birthday too. Sweet. So yeah, yeah I'm gonna. You, you can live. You live walking. So distance I've got my Audi running. Yes. Which how long was that thing sitting for? Ten years. It's so, a coupe ninety, right? Yeah. So it's my Audi coupe. Dude, the coupe nineties are fucking dope. And uh, there yeah. it is. So there it is. Look how much dust is on that bad boy. <laughs> so I got it running. It's running a good. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. Is break. it like stock ish? Uh, no, it's stock engine currently, but I'm built. Uh, actually, but Tim's building a motor for me. Really? Yeah. So what, like a five cylinder. Yeah. Because you know the whoa. first fucking thing about building so, a five cylinder. So have you met Dimitri? 
at BBI. He's I don't the know. new. He's one of their new engineers. Is he the five cylinder guy? He's a five cylinder god. All right. Yeah. All right. So I like. See, this will be fun because I sent I sent Batim a Fox body, mm-hmm. and he was all. I worked on these in high school. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he had like an old Mustang. When oh he, yeah. No. Like, he used to drag race an old Mustang. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, they they did a good job in my no, car. They did a great job. I love you. I, well, you sold that thing. I did for charity. Oh, that's cool. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you got a lot for it. Sixty-five grand. That's rad. Yeah, that's and rad. Tomorrow morning, I'm giving half of it to the Peter Zippy Memorial Fund, which is an animal shelter in Hermosa Beach. I respect uh, that. that. Does cats, I definitely yeah. like animals more than people. Me too. I'm yeah. so glad that the the winner got to choose, and the winner elected to give it to an animal shelter because they know I like animals. So here we go. Oh, so the winner got to pick. Sold it on Bring a Trailer. The winner chose the charity. Mm. Could have gone either way, but it went the right way. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Now it's a cool vehicle. And now it's Lee Keen Safari Car. That's the daily purple. Oh, you! Uh, I have oh. a purple leaking safari car. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty rad. We should do a cross. There it is. We should do a crossover that's low versus high. Wow, <laughs> take that's, your car and mine. that's that's rad. It's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's, I respect that. It's pretty fucking cool. I respect that. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's such a bummer because when I bought my nine eleven, they were like really cheap, right? Yeah, so, isn't yours like a special one too? It's like an and dial my, turbo. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, I bought mine for there. It is. Brian has a was it was it the first RWB in America? Uh, one of the first two. So mine and Mark's were built at the same time. So Mark Arsenal from uh, Illust Fat Lace. Mm. So he built the green one. Mm-hmm. I built the white one. And uh, but Mark like changed the kit, backdated it, painted a different color. It's like a totally different car now. So sort of mine has now just become yeah by Battlefield promotion the first car. And so. yours, I, I yours, I you know. A lot of people, including myself, have shit on various aspects of RWB, not because of, of his work, which is stellar, yep. but because people do the fucking kit and then nothing else. Yep. Yours is fast. Mine was fast before yours was fa- kit. Yeah, well, yeah. yours was a turbo from factory, yeah. so like the wide thing like really Made works. Sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I gotta actually say, like my car was kind of sketchy before it was wide. <laughs> Is like it I, less sketchy now? Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to get the the rear to like really come around, but it used to. Like, well, if it was it was a non deal car, like a built, was it one of those? So I drove a turbo that had hot rod parts that they didn't know where they were from, and it's like four hundred horsepower. And What's I've the story the on the Andale a couple cars. times? And the so, cars are crazy. So the backstory that I know of my car, and again, this is something that's been told to me by other people, and I know the the Andale guys have seen my car at BBI, and like, yeah, we're like, oh yeah, that's we we know the parts on that. Mm-hmm. So. This is the story I was told. So if anyone wants to fact check me, I'm just telling a story. There is no documentation. I'm just telling someone another story. So apparently when the 965, which also people hate that I call it a 965, but it is actually my my, 964 turbo. My part part numbers say 965, right? So 965 was the, it's basically a 930 in a 964 body. So it's still with like a little bit updated management. And because the real 964 turbo is the 36, right? Right. So mine's a 33. So uh, real quickly, uh, when that car came out, a bunch of people bought it. And apparently a year or two later, they announced the 36. And there's a ton of really angry Porsche owners because they got a car that is now feels like outdated and they weren't told that this was coming out. So apparently a bunch of dealers in the U.S., kind of put together a turbo package upgrade kit that Andy Al built for Hmm. for all of them. So that's what it is. So it's like intercooler, Mm -hmm. turbo, some piping, slight management change. The only thing that still exists from that, though, is is the intercooler because mm-hmm. Tim and PBI is kind of given a bit more of a boost now. So it's like mid four hundred probably at this point, which is goes like which a is motherfucker. plenty quick for that car. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. And and not knocking anyone who builds thousand horsepower nine elevens, but if you can't have fun in a four hundred horsepower nine eleven, you're yeah. not driving. Especially it, right? if air four hundred horsepower in an air cooled right, car air-cooled, is air-cooled. a shitload. No. Is yours laggy? Uh, so it used to be really laggy. It was like super sketch. Like we'd be like, Brr, "Fuck you!" Yeah. Like that. You know? <laughs> and um, now it's it's it actually comes in pretty progressive. They changed the turbo. Yeah, we wastegate and a bunch of other stuff, and it's definitely been like. And the, they retuned everything, and yeah. the tune is definitely changed a lot. So imagine what, it's amazing what modern technology can do to I an bet. old car. I've so. driven like a. I drove like a. 83 you know four mm-hmm. speed acp's car it was like a four speed that's funny my the first turbo i ever drove was acp's, was ACP's car, car? Too. oh yeah. that's funny oh. and that car's like wait for it wait oh. for it and you get boosted the very oh. top with the, with the four speed it takes fucking forever so funny story on buying my car and acp's car uh i found my car on ebay i really wanted a white car with a red interior i found it in colorado it was actually a ferrari collector 
who yeah. had it and just didn't want it because it was a Porsche and Porsche didn't have any value at the time. That's funny. <laughs> I bought it for thirty five thousand. Oh, is that with James Chen's? Yeah, Kuntosh? that's that's it with James Chen's. You know, I just Kuntosh. bought one of those. So. I saw I that a, black, a, right? Red. Oh, red, red, with, red. Red with gold That's wheels. That's a good color. That's fucking yeah. awesome. You'll put, see it at Redwood. Put that with like a blonde with high-waisted pants mm-hmm. laying down next to it, and mm-hmm. that's that's the poster above my bed as a child. <laughs> So yeah, yours looks good next to that though. That works. Yeah, no, that was cool, and I that's one of my dream cars. So it was like when he came by with it. I mean, it's funny because it's a dream car I could never fit in. Yeah, so it's tough for I'm you. I'm happy that you I'm, own it. I'm at the right, right at the limit. I have to take my shoes off to drive it. So so wait, ACP's car. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah so I buy my car. Right, it was had forty thousand miles on it original. I bought it for thirty five grand. <laughs> <laughs> Which at the time it was a lot. My friend mm-hmm. Tony, you know Tony Harmer. Mm-hmm. Tony said to me, "You should have bought an Evo, because <laughs> no one cared about air cooled Volkswagen. I mean, air cooled Porsches. Same thing. Air cooled Volkswagens. It was a super Beetle to all my That's friends. So you know? funny. And he was like, you should have bought an Evo. It's faster.'" Evos and, are worth uh, millions now, too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, but, um, <laughs> you should have bought an Evo. That's a great. Yeah, car. no, and like nobody cared. It was like, I was like, I just want a Porsche. I've always wanted one. I bought the car I wanted. So I bought it in Colorado and it took about a month for it to show up. And I had to go to a rally. I forget which one it was. Maybe New England Forest Rally. And ACP shows up for the rally and he drove his 911 there. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I just bought one. He's like, oh, Red, you want to take mine for a spin? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. And I get in and I don't fit. <laughs> And you're like, oh no. I'm like, oh man, I just bought a car I don't fit in. Because the only cars I'd driven before were actually like fully prepped race cars with race seats. Oh, and like, like real low. Yeah, and, far and like back. I, I fit yeah, a lot yeah. better. And I was like, wow, I just bought a car I don't fit in. So sure enough, the car shows up at my house and like oh, I don't shit. fit in it. But the Germans are smart and there's actually a separate set of holes. So you can unbolt the seat and, and move, move it, it back an inch. There you go. You can move the whole thing back. And then I kind of fit, but then uh, BB, BBI ended up building these crazy setbacks. So I'm now set back six and a half inches. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> you're, you're so my, way, my seat touches the back You got the seat. shack seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's fucking so it's, rad. It's and don't you rock like a tiny steering wheel too for your I knees? I used to for my knees, but now I've gone back to a full-size yeah. wheel because the tiny wheel actually made the car feel super twitchy. Yeah, it changes the steering sure. feel yeah, yeah, like no, so, so much. So now I've got yeah, like a regular yeah. like a, three, like a three, oh, that's 330 good. or something Oh, okay, like cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's six and a half inches back is awesome, dude. You're fucking chilling in the back. I think I saw you at like a random event thing or maybe, I don't know, Whatever, years ago, and it was just it just been done with the red interior and the wide body, mm-hmm. and it just said, "Who?" And it was like, "This is it's a that's a really really, really good that car looks." Car. That's exactly how the car looked that when I from the day it rolled off from uh, from the Kai building, and the car was already so a white car, already had red interior, um, the red wheels. Like I wanted. Because at the time, if you think about it, most of the raw wealth, because there were no cars in the U.S., so people weren't doing like the car show look yeah, on the yeah, RWBs yeah, yeah. yet. All of the cars in Japan were like flat black with Meisters. Yeah. Like they all they all looked exactly alike. And then there was like the one like signal green one, right? Before those cars ever came to America, were they building them as race cars or were they yeah, building they them were, as street they cars? Yeah, they were more race cars or like street car, race cars for the street type yeah. thing. So they were most- They still race them over there, right? So mo- yeah, they do. They have the idlers race, and um, which they've invited me to, but I'm like, I don't fit in normal 911s, yeah. so we're going to have to figure that out. And I'd love to go race there, but uh, I wanted to build something. I, I wanted to build a street car, but I wanted to build something that was like kind of like simple and like- So like one of the- My car is the first car to ever have the bottom part painted black- Oh, like which, the skirt? Which is a Volkswagen thing. Like the bottom of like Volkswagens have like the black trim because oh, yeah, I like yeah. the OEM kind of look to it, you know. And then also if you notice there's crosshairs in the headlights. Yeah. So we added crosshairs, another like weird like Volkswagen homage. Yeah. Just a That's VW fun. kid who eventually That's funny. He got a little bit of money. Yeah. You're going to go back. 35 and- grand. That was it. I could have uh, bought, yeah. bought a brand new Maxima at the time. <laughs> oh my if we put, if we put Can that you get a license plate frame made that says you should have bought an Evo, <laughs> Tony Harper? Not, not, a, not a Evo. Yeah. Fuck. So. Yeah, you, you'll, you're going to be laughing now. But yeah, you say so, you're trying to sell that thing? Because you got to buy a house? <sighs> I don't know, man. Not it's, publicly? It's a, hard, it's, a, it's a hard sell. Yeah, we we put an offer on a house and it got accepted today. Congratulations. So we'll see if that actually comes together. That I, would be I'm, exciting. I'm a, I'm a year from 40. And I have 13 cars, and this will be my first time. <laughs> you Priorities. Might, you Priorities. might be a flat bill if. Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. Wait, of the th- 13? Holy shit. What else is there? Porsche? I don't that need, fucking old 350 you just oh, rolled look, up in? There's ACPs. There's uh, ACPs. Uh, yeah. His, uh, um, so uh, this is always a tough one. Uh, so I've got I've got the 911. Uh-huh. Well, I, I include my wife's cars. Okay. Right? So it's a group package. Ashley's got, she's got a few. She's got a few, too. She's got a so, few. 
We've got the 911. We've got the. Um, she has a 944. I have the. Audi. Does that work? Uh, it will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's like a whole joke about how like is it Brian's? Does it run? Well, yeah. when, you, when you were running late, I was like, oh well, Brian's got. He's got one car running that's pushing the car in front that steers, but that car doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah, so we um, then we've got uh, I've got an Audi uh, four thousand Quattro that I traded for a scooter. Okay. So which is for sale if anybody wants it. The um, Audi or the scooter? The Audi. The Audi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just I want to really focus on the coupe, and I don't need another four thousand. Yeah. Um, and then I've got uh, I've got the Nova. Mm-hmm. Um. We've actually you got a, that the the even shittier truck. Oh, that F one hundred is the most reliable thing we own. Is it? Yo, so last year that's an ugly. I'm, we're just gonna tangent bro. all over. It's awesomely ugly. <laughs> that's an ugly. That truck. is an awesomely ugly truck. <laughs> so last year we uh, we we were going to, and that's actually when we, that's before we put the wheels on it. That's not the best photo. There's better photos where it's less ugly. Um, Last year we were we planned a trip to go down to Baja with all of our friends uh, to go camping and we have that Land Rover Discovery mm-hmm. another vehicle we have them putting a Cummins in right now and uh, oh that's a good uh, idea. that's yeah very R- cool R two eight swap really really nice kit um but uh so we were going to go down and we we blew the motor in the Rover and all of our friends were like oh, are you still gonna come like because we planned the the trip yeah. right. And I was like, well, we don't really have a vehicle to get down there with. And like last minute, I was like, fuck it. We'll just drive the F100. And we drove it to two hours south of San Felipe from L.A. No problems. Oh, Everybody great. else on the trip had a problem. Really? The <laughs> Rover just ran. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the F100 just ran great. It has the worst tick and knock. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Put fuel in it. Run it. It runs great. It has no choke. So you have to like sit and warm it up for five minutes just oh, to get man, it going, yeah. like sitting on the throttle. And uh, it's like an old three FE three sixteen. You you can't kill those motors. Are great. That's awesome. All right, so, points. But that's Ashley's truck. It's so. ugly, but it works. But it's good because I have a beautiful wife who drives a really tough, ugly truck. Yeah. So it's like it's a good. It's, it's a, a good, good combo. combo. It's very yeah. California. She, she pulled it into uh, off road expo and like you know there's million dollar trucks and every guy was like nice truck. Yeah. Oh, of course, <laughs> sick truck, chick. <laughs> and brain, I was yeah. and I was in the passenger seat and I was like yeah I'll man, just be over yeah, here. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I like the my wife works on cars and stuff so Dude, there's freedom in the fact that it's like a little bit rough too you don't have to worry about no, it we should, it's I, great should, so that's something like when i the thing i hate about the 911 is i hate street parking it yeah like i just worry about it and that's why i built the nova because i'm, I'm going back like i Circle tangent around. but i come back that's right okay. I like big, the big into german cars so on so on but when i moved here i just wanted like a car that was cool but like you could street park and not worry that much about and so when I built the Nova, it was like I, it was intentionally like I just want to keep it rough. Yeah. Like everything needs to be rough about it. She so could just park it wherever. And uh, but at the same it time, it didn't get too nice. It stayed rough. I still street park it. So like I mean I've had friends like send me a photo and be like you know the motor in this thing is like forty grand <laughs> and you're parked on the street I'm yeah. like yeah whatever like most people don't know I'm gonna, yeah, I'm so. gonna bleep that in the edit of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out so um but yeah it's uh like that thing is just super rad I mean we've done oh, there's the motor there's a motor, the old right motor there. that's the old motor coming out so I do like the look of that car did you ever put any carpeting in it it was nah. raw dynamite I yeah think, it's last still raw time. dynamite <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh <laughs> it's it. awesome it, I, I kind of just like it being being that it's uh I I, I want to go through it and fix it I built the car in 65 days and uh it was myself uh my friend Colin Wolf Tony Angelo helped me a little bit and my wife and who's still my girlfriend at the time and uh it was like a super thrash to build it we built it for power tour and like just we back half the oh, car. It has. It, it has. Wasn't it kind of a disaster on Power Tour? Yeah, it broke every day. Yeah. But uh, but it was. It's like an Art Morrison frame. Like there's a lot of oh, stuff yeah. in it, and that was the whole thing. Is I wanted the car to like when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, cool. Like, and kids are always asking me like, oh, like how do I get my stance like that, or how does the car look like that? I'm like, you put it, you back half the car and you put an Art Morrison frame in, and you do a like, shit ton of work and you cut all the fenders oh, it's out. Fifty wow. grand. Yeah. Oh shit. But the whole idea was it wasn't supposed to wasn't supposed to look that way, and it was supposed to just look like a simple car. Which I think it still does. Like yeah, the it grill, does. If you the don't grills, know, the grills crooked. The all of my gaps 
on all of my body panels is miserable. There you go. And I'm okay with that. I like that. Well, yeah, so, I mean, it's, that's that's what like uh, good hot. But it from this distance here, pull that picture. It's up. a fifty. It's from a fifty that foot or fifty miles. Right there, it looks really, really yeah. fucking good. Yeah. But if you actually look in and you look at the reflection above the quarter, <laughs> you will realize that the reflection is really off because that's how wavy the body work is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But who cares? But yeah, street park, it's, so fuck it's it. not what it's meant to be. It's meant to I just be a fun I completely understand car. about the 911, though. That's yeah. a tough one to... Yeah. Because to, it's got to really be... And it's matte I, white, too. I got to admit, when the when the 911s boomed, it kind of bummed me out because I went from owning a 30000 or $35,000 car with a cool body kit on it yeah. to owning something that was really, really expensive that like I never... Like I could never buy, I could never replace that car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I now own something that I couldn't actually afford. Yeah. And it makes you kind of change the way you drive things. And that sucks. It's a little annoying. Where like the Nova, it's like, I just beat the living shit out of it. And I love that car for that. But like with the 911, like you break simple things and they cost a lot of money now Yeah. where it used to be like not that bad to replace them yeah you know? i completely understand i bought a i'm I, worried that my safari car might be too nice to like yeah. beat on off-road my car had a sunroof i cut a sunroof off of a parts car for 700 bucks can you imagine cutting a roof off a of nine like yeah. it was a perfectly good car <laughs> it could have been made into a car but they yeah. were like ah yeah whatever 700 bucks yeah you can cut the roof off of that thing now wow. now you find like to rust. slick to slick top yeah. your car there's one that's been on craigslist i keep seeing because i have a really bad problem with craigslist but um like i just constantly search it like if i need if i like what i used to like if it's like the cigarette habit like mm-hmm. you have nothing to do so you smoke a cigarette mm-hmm. if i have nothing to do i look on craigslist and that's how i also have an opal that i haven't told anyone about but we'll an move opal. On. i bought an opal manta i'm like a total <laughs> like i saw it on craigslist and i was oh my God. i saw it on craigslist and i was driving down south it was like in oceanside i was like well i'm already here oh my god so how I, bad is it i haven't is it posted fucked? it but it looks a lot like the one the, it's an orange one so it looks like that one over in the bottom corner there yeah it looks like that there's a guy who's got a fucking it's pretty rad. The brownest you know pretty one rad. ever in that's Malibu. got great shape that's it has it has really good bones it's not bad it's sort of it looks capri-ish like the cheap version what was the orange car you got that Maserati uh, from what? Remember you had it for like three days. Uh, what? Alpha, sorry. What? You picked it up up north, two two hours north. What the fuck are we talking about? GT3. Oh, oh no, it was a Mont- Alpha Montreal. Alpha Montreal. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, it Which was like the fucking cheap ace. Alpha you ever drive one of them? No. It's got a two point six liter V eight in it. Sounds like the oh, wow. end so of rev, the fucking revs, world. Like the apocalypse. Oh Love my it. god, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Weird looking car. There, that's oh, the one. Yeah. That's the one I drove. That's, that's my a picture. Bit, that's a bit sexier than my Opal. I don't but know, man. I, I, I dig the Opal. It's yeah, got a little, Cam- cool. a lot of little first gen Camaro in the front. It, it's like a first gen Camaro had sex with a like early BMW. Yeah, yeah. yeah the itself. I see. I even good. see a little bit of early Skyline in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit of that. Well, so the reason I got this car, it's weird. I, I've been wanting to buy a Japanese car forever because mm. I don't have one in my collection. I had an STI for a short period of time, yeah. but it was like a commuter. Yeah, I love yeah. it, though. It was a 2004 STI, and it's like I lowered it for one day, and then I raised it back up because <laughs> I realized that it's more fun to yeah. be able to just hit. Because we were that was when our office was still in downtown. Uh-huh. And... Lowered I was like, I just, like, just wanted to suck. mash through stuff, and yeah. that's just made it cool. But great vehicle, but I've always... I just like I'd like to buy a Japanese car just because I feel like it rounds out the collection because I'm weird with OCDs like that. But I really like like old Japanese muscle uh-huh. and, um, you know, like 70s, kind of like that kind of. Well, the early Skylines yeah. are amazing and um, expensive, though. And I was looking for a long time at Mitsubishi Lancers, mm-hmm. so which was sold here as the Dodge Colt. And I wanted to <laughs> yeah. do that with like a 4G63 in it and everything. And uh, I was looking for one for a long time and then the Opal popped up and I was like, it still had like the similar look to it. Kind of does. So in the end, I ended up buying... <laughs> Uh, another German car, <laughs> so which is weird because I what I want to do is I want to put a rotary in it um, in the Opal. Yeah, and here's why. By the way, I want to let you know you're getting exclusive on this. I haven't told anyone about the Opal Woo-hoo! because I get Headlines. so much. I get so much. I love how much of a dick you are. By the way, I still love you, Matt. Um, I get so much crap on the fact that I don't finish projects and I buy new projects and I don't know why I just enjoy the new car. Like, and then I like, this will sit for a year before I probably even start on it, but I like thinking about it. But you have a big fucking shop where you can do that. Yeah. It's okay. Like that Audi sat for 10 years. It wasn't really in anything's way. No, it sat in a garage in Queens for like 10 years. (laughs) I didn't even see it. It smelled so bad when I went to go pick it up. But it looks good from the back, actually. It's funny how from from the trunk backwards, it's identical to an Opal GT, basically. Yeah. Uh, They they used the same mold. Narrow ass. I'm sure they fucking did. So the thought is, is it's a German car built by Americans. 
with mm-hmm. a Japanese motor that, that was, was a global product with a Japanese. If I put the if I put the uh, you know if I put the the rotary in it, it would be a Japanese motor designed by Germans. Because that's the Wankel. That's a circle. Yeah, full it's circle. A full circle. I like it. Yeah. So I mean, that's the project are idea. Fucking terrible. I've always but besides wa- that. No, but they sound incredible. Yeah. What a fine line between incredible and awful? Wow. I, I I think they just they make a sound. They, they definitely do. make a sound, no. and it's very unique. But man, is it rough on the ears? It's I don't. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's sonorous at all. It's no, just it's a pier- it's a pierce. I don't. Really I like. feel like I wish I had hurt here to argue. Oh, for I me. know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> there, you know what it is? It's like <laughs> hurt I, should come. I have a lot of different cars. A lot. I've got V eights. I got four cylinders. I got five cylinders. Uh, I like things that shoot fire and rotaries are really good at shooting fire well cars that fair. shoot fire so, are better than by cars the way, that don't I, shoot fire I do want to I want to build an NA rotary because I just like like a 10,000 like RPM that's the yeah. idea like well, super high rev lightweight car like a really good what does it like, cost to have a good rotary built these days um, you know, it's a really. I know the more rotors, I have, I haven't gotten that far down, which is part of the reason my projects never get done. Because I'm like, oh, that costs that much. Well, I guess I'll wait a few months. Yes, that's sitting. So, but now the guys, uh, Angel Motorsports, are the same guys that build uh, hurt stuff. We've been talking about doing the Renesis motor, which is oh, the crappy one, the, that came RX-8 in the RX8 one, yeah. But they are savable, and like that's part <laughs> yeah. of it. But you can because they're kind of crap, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. get them real cheap, and then like go from there bridge apex board, seals all that stuff. is that what you do i don't know i don't know how rotaries work. i like i love because like i'll be honest, drop a, a few keyword. years ago i had really no idea about it but i've lived like next to hurt for the past two right, years yeah. so now i know a little bit more but i'm like oh wow that's like really incredible that someone decided to reinvent the wheel with the rotary yeah like it's isn't of, his whole thing that hurts whole thing that his car never works though uh his car runs right now but he's always he breaks, he breaks things it. real quickly yeah. yeah i don't finish projects he just breaks them immediately he breaks the same project over and over i do love how his car he has, manages to look like it hasn't been broken nearly as many times as it has yeah, he has zero mechanical sympathy yeah so and you would think it's because he doesn't actually understand how cars work like you, like the things he does. Yeah, and it's like he does. He it's just like you know that's gonna explode. He that. just doesn't care. So <laughs> I respect the hell out of that though. He's one of I the do. first people. Like I grew up skateboarding and like riding BMX, and like he treats his car like I used to treat my skateboard or my <laughs> BMX bike. Like I didn't like I didn't care if my BMX bike looked good. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was meant to be beat on, mm-hmm. and like when you finish beating on it, you replace the parts and you put something else on. Like I mean, even like a new skateboard, like the first thing you want to do is scratch it up because yeah. you look like a total right, herd yeah, yeah, if like you show up and it's like it's too not shiny. scratched. Yeah. yeah. So for like hurt first lap out, he's probably gonna lose a bumper or a side <laughs> skirt, potentially a hood, which is what he got his nickname <laughs> Hood Pins from. So I think that know. video is amazing. That video is hysterical. So I love what videos. have you learned about rotaries then for how, how to make them work? You know, what's do you have, are you gonna do that four Talk. rotor plan? Or are you just doing turbo? No, I I, 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 I four rotors just like way too I much. I would love to, and they sound phenomenal. But uh, no, you work with someone who knows rotaries. Gotcha. And then you listen to them, <laughs> yeah. and you run really good management so that like you're aware of what your engine's doing. And like Hurt can't even start his without a laptop. So I've just really? realized that like that's <laughs> oh my the, God. that's the level at which you need to operate a rotary at. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Although so I kind of level. Yeah. Like if you're on that level, it's fine. So and there's just like things like you always have to warm it up. People run. This is like so crazy, but like people run like premix. And like, really? Yeah, you didn't like know a that? two-stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You run premix. <laughs> that's like that's part of it, which is like hilarious to me that that's like acceptable. Like. It's not even just a tune market. Like, yeah. there's guys who just own old rotaries, and they just, like, have to run premix. That so. is... I, I don't even like E85 cars. I just... I don't want to fucking deal with that bullshit. The fact... Imagine mixing your own fucking fuel. What a pain in the ass. Yeah. So... Um, should we talk about your job for a little bit? Sure. You have any, you, How long do we go for? Show's usually 90 minutes. Oh, all right. But, cool. like, the Sick. last 30, we got... Do we, have, do we have a bunch of questions, Zach? I bet we do. Yeah, we get questions from the audience, so we, we usually do the last 20 or 30 minutes on those. Sweet. I, I will admit, I forgot to say I was here today, but Hoonigan told people they That's were. That's okay. Which is probably better. I told a bunch of people you were here. Hoonigan told people, which is a little bit bigger following than I have personally, so I think it'll work out That's fine. That's fine. I don't which expect- also means it's probably more hateful comments, because like, the people who like me follow me, yeah. the people who don't like me follow Hoonigan. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's just how it works. You um, can share it afterwards. That's yeah. fine. It's I mean, you know something? I, I feel like I should have started the show with this, but like... We got like the whole Gymkhana 10 thing coming. We probably should That's talk about saying. that too. Yeah, totally. Because we haven't talked about it We were at all. watching the Gymkhana Files uh, trailer on your website before you got here. Yeah, yeah. that looks cool. But wait, to talk about, to lead into that. Go for it. How did you get started with and, and Hoonigan actually get created? Sure. Um, I'm going to tell the short version of that because then yeah, we've only got about like 60 minutes left or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 
when I was working at Rides, uh, we wanted to cover the gumball rally. You remember mm. that thing? Yeah. Did you, ever, did you ever do gumball? Uh, no, I did bull run a bunch. I think I did bull run the year. I think you and I were I did the same seven, year. eight, oh, ten, no, I did eleven, six. Six. Well, yeah. yeah. You did the year before me, I think. I did six with a with a Z06. All right. That's a good time. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was when that car first came out, too. GM, <laughs> that car was rowdy GM, as fuck. It was super rowdy. <laughs> it was fun beating up on Ferraris. Yeah, you know, it was like, a really yeah, fast Yeah, you see the sticker price out. on this thing? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, we did. We wanted to do gumball, and I'd heard that Rob Deerdick was going to go do gumball, and you know, working at rides was like celebrity minded kind of thing. And I was like, oh, let me reach out to DC. I knew some people over there, um, and we didn't even want to like go along with them. It was just like, hey, Rob, if you could just do a quick interview and you could share some photos when you guys get back, we can, we can make something out of it. And um, so I sent over a little note, and uh, about like four hours later, and gumball, by the way, is is starting. Like within like thirty six hours because I never do anything <laughs> with enough time ahead. Like yeah. I, I never plan ahead. There's no planning. I just yeah. do it. So I was like, so I get a phone call from uh, from Pam Zam, who was uh, the who was the marketing person over there, who we still work with, which is why I named her out. But um, she calls. She says, "Hey, uh, Ken Block, who's the you know like I forget what his title was at then, but like the once owner of DC, and you know I think he's like president or chief brand officer, or whatever at the time." said that if you can get to Trafalgar Square by tomorrow, he's got room in his car and you could ride along with him for the gumball. I was like, oh. It's in London, right? Yeah, it's in London. I was in New You're York like, City. Uh, I'm six foot seven. Does no, he I didn't still bother I didn't bother to I didn't bother to mention that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what was this car? So I run in, I talked to my they were running three STIs that oh. year. And I thought that was super cool because mm-hmm. yeah. they had like um they had STIs that were built by um Crawford? Oh, Crawford Crawford yeah. yeah thank you um and you know they had like 450 horse so they like were pretty fun cuz they were faster than a lot of the like you know sports, horse, cars, sports yeah. cars and they could keep up with some of the supercars and so on so we went out there what's up I said the fuck that'd be fun yeah so so I was like all right yeah I'll I'll definitely come along and um I convinced my publisher to buy me a ticket to England and I was like I'll figure out the rest when I get there. I went with a backpack. <laughs> like I did just like I just went with a backpack, like two shirts and like a pair of pants and like you know, and this was the mid two thousands, so I, they were baggy pants, so they were big. <laughs> and um so like went out there and uh like showed up, meet them, like had never like I didn't know any of them and uh you know, and Ken was like, "All right, cool." He's like, "I don't know if you're gonna fit in the car." Yeah. And like, sure enough, like I remember writing in the article like, something about like sitting next to expensive luggage. Like I was yeah. like crammed there because it was all this like Louis Vuitton luggage, <laughs> and it was like three inches of space for me in the back seat. But long story short, we had a ton of fun on Gumball, and um, you know, I, I didn't I didn't really know much about Ken at that point. He was like, "Oh, I'm getting into rally racing." So he was so a, a shoe guy at that point. Yeah. Real quickly, yeah. I mean, he sold his company to Quicksilver. And decided like he'd worked really really hard and um, was like I want to go race cars like that looks really cool to me and uh, went and took some rally school uh, things at Tim O'Neill's up in New Hampshire and they were actually I think they're the reason that he went further with it because like Tim was like you're actually really talented at this and you have Ken doesn't have the fear gene Mm. like I've met so many people in my life and like him Travis Pastrana Mike Ryan, I don't know if you know Mike's not. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. like there's Mike only, Ryan, the semi truck guy, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like those are the few people I've met in my life that like they're just lacking the fear gene. Travis mm-hmm. is on another level yeah. of lacking the fear yeah. gene. It, it's almost like a whole other. Like he enjoys fear. Dude, yeah, like, I, I think it, I think it gets Action Heroes rocked. today. He's got like a new show on YouTube. Yeah. Action Heroes, and it's he's trying to coach one of his friends to, like to throw this uh, front flip on a dirt bike. And oh he's yeah, trying and trying. Travis goes up and just does it like second try. And when he crashes the first one, he just gets up and he's like, oh, I just gotta huck a little harder. He's just, he's just <laughs> yeah. smiling. He acts like a six year old and he's like forty. I, I will tell you that he's uh, he's one of the greatest people I've ever. He met. He absolutely seems. He's like that. really, he really just such a good guy. Like I've never seen. Him on a bad day, and I've seen him having a bad day, but he's not having a no, bad day. No, he's always if smiling, and yeah, yeah, crashing yeah. stuff, so, and having fun. But yeah, anyway, and uh, just to tell that story a lot shorter, while we were on Gumball, I was like, you know, can what we really should go do is like, you should go do one lap of America because, like, this is like a bunch of rich guys with the, like their supercars, like being dangerous on the street and it'd be cool to go do one lap where we can actually go drive racetracks, mm-hmm. you know. And he was like, cool, I've never heard of that. 
And I was like, oh, I think it'd be really cool. So me and him ended up putting a one lap uh, program together, and we went and ran one lap the following year together. In, a, in SDI, in the same SDI, we oh, just yeah. re, we just reliveried it. So if one you actually, lap if you is search, fucking if you search gnarly. one lap Ken Block STI, I think you'll find the photo of it. And uh, yeah, it was rough. We blew the motor on the first day. Oh no. yeah, and, but but we we like we had a motor come out from Vermont, change the engine, really? got back on the road. Is it yeah, that white yeah, one? It's that white one. So. I think if you open that one, one lap is is an as far as amateur yeah, yeah. Yeah, racing see, events my, go. My, my name's on the window. That there was back go. when I still was allowed to drive cars. Yeah. Now at Hoonigan, I just sit behind the camera. <laughs> so ah, photo bucket. But uh, one lap is very gnarly. Right, I maybe. recommend anyone who there is interested go. in doing amateur motorsports to go do one lap. Yeah. It's hard. So here's the beats thing. You up, and we're gonna keep tangenting. I'm so apologetic on that because yeah, okay. it's hard to follow. But. So here's what I want to do one year. One year I want to get everyone together to go do one lap. Because I the Just thing take it over. The thing I didn't like about one lap was that we felt like outsiders. Uh-huh. Like nobody wanted us there because we weren't like that like road race crew yeah. but it'd be cool if like you came and, count like, me in if all you do hood, it like, count me in 100%. and we just reach out to you know guys like Kamisa and, and we get everybody to go yeah. and just go do it and just as, run like, press group, cars because uh, like that's what we did with Power Tour we went to Power Tour and we brought you know we ended up bringing like 15 like different of our younger friends with us and it was like just a cool and we didn't hang out with anyone else from Power Tour we just like, kind of did our mm. own thing you know and I think doing that for one lap would be a lot of fun um, count me in if you do that yeah, I would we should, love to we should totally do it it'd yeah. be fun and like it I like the press card thing. I did, do, I did it in a press card. Yeah. 2013, I did it in an X5M in the SCV yeah. class. The, pre- boss. the press car like spec challenge would be kind we of all rad. Got the same press yeah. car. How about this? No performance variants. <laughs> right, so <laughs> so we we're just out there in like the Corollas and overs. stuff like that. Yeah. The Cross Tech or something like whatever that horrible cross Subaru track. is. Yeah, the Cross Track is the worst <laughs> car ever. Cross Track. Or sorry, sorry, Subaru. The you sound of a cool dozen cars. CVTs. It's like a UTV race. Um, so, yeah. So, so you did one lap, blew it up. We did one lap. And like and during that process, like I just started working more and more with him. And we, you know, I had a need and he had a need. My need was, was I was launching Zero to 60 magazine. And I needed a race car driver who wanted to do fun things because that's actually really rare. Yeah. And like as much shit as people give Ken. Like, you know, I, I, I had this conversation the other day with someone, which is like the number one comment. Like you, you look at go through Jim Connors, right? You read the comments. One of the, one of my favorite comments is, yeah, but he's not a WRC champion. Yeah. But you know, with name a WRC champion who makes Jim Connor videos for you for free to yeah. watch, like, cause Loeb's not doing it. Like, yeah, he's not, he knows he's not yeah. and like, he was never going to be cause he didn't start racing till he was 37. Like, yeah. He lost that opportunity. He the never only was other WRC driver that's even kind of fun is Petter Solberg. Petter's rad. Yeah. yeah Petter's rad, but still like, but he's not doing that he, shit. He's not doing that. Yeah. And it's like, sure. Could they do it? I'm sure they could, but they're not, and they're not making them for you every year and putting a ton of work into making these films and doing that. And Ken had that thing where he wanted to go do really, really cool stuff. So Jim Connor was actually a magazine story in zero to 60 that had a video component to it. And that was the original video. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's fun. That's how weird the world is that that was, it was the initial thing was like, let's do a magazine thing. And then Ken like film some parts. And what ended up happening was he filmed more and more parts. And that started, we, we started to realize that it was something cool. Yeah. And, um, now it's a thing. Yeah. And I mean, I, I remember the first video, I remember saying to him like, dude, this thing's going to do like, 500,000 views it's gonna crack because no one knew what big views were at yeah. that point it just wasn't what the, year was that oh nine uh 2000 uh 2008 was Eight? Jim Connor one wow that's... which was called which by the way was only called Jim Connor practice because we didn't yeah, name yeah. it one because we weren't so pretentious to think there was going to be a <laughs> yeah. second right the first annual um. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly you're just coming out strong yeah, with that yeah. one so yeah and uh I mean it's been it's been rad and um so, so I was coming out now I was using him to help me launch Zero Sixty, yeah. and he was using me because, in the reality, was he didn't really have that many people in the motorsports world who knew it, and like I, it, it was, he invited me to his house for Thanksgiving. Right, this is a funny story. I don't think I've ever shared this, but he invited me to his house for Thanksgiving, and we get there, and it was like really weird to begin with because like we weren't that close yet, mm-hmm. like we weren't really that friendly. He invited me and my girlfriend at the time out, and we're there, and all of a sudden, like he I, he like walks me into the dining room, and there's this like whole like. They were like working on a new video for DC skateboarding called the DC video. And the whole like thing was laid out on the table. And I walked in, and he was like, What do you think about this? Blah, blah, blah. And I realized that was my job interview. 
Oh. Like no. there it is, like Thanksgiving weekend, we're out yeah. in Utah to go snowboarding, and he was just like watching me work through everything, mm-hmm. and that was sort of where we started. It all started to yeah, kind of yeah, gel, yeah. and so he started bringing me out for different projects, and you know before. You know, it's the old joke of like, uh, usually every overnight success started seven years before kind of thing, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like we had done like stunt junkies, which was like him doing that 171 foot uh, record jump in the rally car. We had done like a bunch of other little things. He did this thing down in uh, New Zealand at Snow Park and like all these things had come together and like they all hit, but they didn't crack like Jim Connor did. Mm. And uh, so we did Jim Connor and I have to say like the first two years of that, like I was I was involved but I wasn't there full time. I was still running Zero to Sixty magazine and it was Ken had like a column in the magazine. It was really just like leveraging like, hey, you want to do cool things, you've got some budget to go do cool things. You've yeah. got sponsors who are willing to do cool things. And at that time like like all wheel drive Subarus were like peak. Like yeah, everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like the market for performance. So it yeah. was all the right space. That was when, like, you couldn't even get a Hawkeye. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to get a Hawkeye yeah. in, like, 07, so, 08, and, like, they wanted, like, over sticker yeah. for this one. I was like, oh, So okay. the Hawkeye that's actually in uh, Jim Connor 1 mm. was actually a conversion because it was actually an older car. That we, oh, it was actually really? the same car we did one lap in. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, awesome. um, and that was, like, that was sort of it. We started working together, and uh, 2008 comes, and the crash comes, and the print industry just, like, takes a huge nosedive, and yeah. I'm seeing the writing on the wall of, like, how is this going to pan out for us? And uh, I started kind of, like, hinting to Ken, like, hey, if you want me to come to D.C. to help you run kind of the automotive side of things, you know, wh- what do you think? And uh, he was like, yeah, I don't know, maybe one day. And I was like, all right, man, I'm not hinting enough. Like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah. I need a job. Do I have to whip my dick out? Like, <laughs> yeah. where are we going with this? Yeah. And um, so we got to the point where uh, he, where he decided that he was going to launch his own team with Ford, and he he approached me, and that was actually a weird point because zero to sixty was like full tilt, and things were doing really well, mm-hmm. and I actually didn't really want to leave anymore, but I kind of took that step back and said like, you know, I launched zero to sixty, I love doing it, but it wasn't my magazine, it wasn't mine, it was yeah. the publishing companies, and they had the control over it, and like a lot of bad things happened while I was making that magazine because I like I gave up everything to try to keep what it was, like I, I mean I at some point I gave up part of my salary so they wouldn't reduce the paper quality, yeah. and like I look back at it now and I'm like oh my god what a bloody martyr I was trying to be. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. it mattered so much yeah, to me yeah. at the time, you yeah. know. You and, started it, so. But at the same time, it was never mine. And Ken came to me and said, look, I want you to come be my marketing director, but I also want to start a brand with you that, like, I'll give you an ownership in. Mm. And there was, I was obviously, like, very intrigued by having something that could, like, really be mine. And, uh, you know, and the idea was Hoonigan. And the whole concept around it was there's no motorsport brand that, like, is like what DC was for skateboarders or snowboarders. Like that brand like that just didn't really exist where like if you go and I, the way I always like to portray because like you walk into your, let's say your freshman year of college, like you might not want to admit it, but everyone thought about what t-shirt they were going to wear that yeah, first week because yeah. you want to connect. So like I remember wearing like punk rock tees so mm-hmm. that like other kids would be like, oh, you like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the business so you like, you, you know. You got to find your tribe. I had, I had my, but, and, uh, my nin. You know, yeah, exactly. I, I definitely like, had my downward right, spiral right, t- tour right. t-shirt. And, you, and yeah. you wanted to like connect with people, and like the same thing was for me with skateboarding and riding BMX. And like in automotive, like that was sort of weird. Like, are you gonna wear a Ferrari t-shirt mm-hmm. or a Porsche t-shirt? Like, because it didn't really narrow it down like like that did. So we were like, we want to build a brand that like has an attitude to it. So like, if you see Hoonigan, you're like, oh, I know exactly who you are. Yeah, and yeah. that was sort of the original concept. And, it worked. Uh, I'll tell you, I went to go. Uh, teach a career day at a fucking east la high school about three weeks ago sick where in east la norco okay and uh mad it was a huge school i mean it's a big fucking school out mm-hmm. there and it was uh, norco well, we high used to school. be in boyle heights so like you know <laughs> Hoonigan, Hoonigan has roots out there yeah and dude and and it was like five or six you know waves of like 30 40 kids came through this this thing i did repeatedly mm-hmm. over and over and every single one of those groups had Four, five. That's right. Hoonigan branded awesome. items. I mean, seriously, every single fucking one. It was like, like the the polo pony of fucking right. high school kids. It was amazing. Awesome. 
I was like, oh my God, fucking Scott O's selling all this <laughs> shit. It's all, all these kids. It's crazy. Yeah. It works. I mean, they probably wrote bootleg stuff off of Amazon. It's probably whatever. fake. Yeah, it's probably all fake. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, once you start getting bootlegged, you know you've succeeded. Oh, yeah. Like, once it gets to that point where, like, you see your stuff and you're like, mm. nah, we didn't make that. Like, oh, oh, dude, my dad ran Ralph Lauren for 20 years. I so imagine. About that. Yeah, I mean, imagine the fakery. No. Yeah. You know? By the way, I met, I ran into Steve Catalano. Do you remember Steve, the painter at yeah. AI Design? Yeah. He built a car that was at the Magnaflow booth. Oh, really? It was cool because like, I, I loved all those yeah. AI guys and stuff well, like Ken, that. Well, Ken had, from AI Design, well, I helped, the CLS yeah. 55, right? So that was one of the things I did early on when I was at 0 to 60. That was the first matte black car. Thank you. It was thank you the, for, thank you for uh, remembering 2005, that. 2005, Ken Block, after with AI Design in Tuckahoe, New York, did the first modern matte black car yeah, ever. That, that wasn't like a hot rod or prime. Yeah. No, no. And, and I remember because Matt Filiola from AI Design was like, look at this. Yeah, and that guy, and that guy Steve, is the one who painted it. And yeah. It was a huge. There it is. The second picture in from, on the left. Yep. That's, the, that's the original promo shot for it. Another Tony Harmer photo. That is... I, full credit to Ken Block and to AI Design because that was the first modern matte black car before it was ever a fucking You can thing. see how old it is because it only is at like, like 200 two DPI. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> no, very true. I love, but I, I still love the shape of that car. It was one of the yeah. best best sedans ever made. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, and that was a, that was the Brabus K8 kit. Yeah. It was a beast. Ooh. I got to, so we, we debuted that at SEMA in the uh, zero to 60 booth and then uh, I got to drive it from Ken was like, "Hey, I gotta go home. You mind bringing it to my house in Utah?" From and I, New York? No, no. He was living in uh, Rancho Santa Fe, so he was down in like San Diego area. Oh, wow. And he's like, "You mind driving it there from Vegas?" And we brought it through El Mirage <laughs> and like took it out, on, <laughs> took it out on the like on the flats. How's like, there dust in the tail lights? Yeah. <laughs> like we showed up in his house, and I was like, "Oh my god, I just trashed his car!" Like, let's see how this goes over. Pretty rowdy so, car, yeah, though. Yeah, we live. It's like it's it's one of those like instant burnout cars. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's like the like Mercedes muscle cars, mm -hmm. like that. Like, yeah, the C Dude, you can get a fucking CLS 55, it's like an $11,000 car right now. Oh, shit, that's, <laughs> not, that's what I'm gonna do tonight <laughs> on Craigslist. <laughs> fucking wind what, that what, bitch what, up. What some. can you get uh C63s for? That, like the like first, the first that gen? first gen, that 2005, like maybe, like were, the, maybe like in the th th high those 30s. Were great. I, yeah. I don't know if you can get a. I don't know if you can get them under thirty. I think in the, in the thirties probably. Zach could find some. I um, I love that car. I remember writing a review on that in zero sixty, and uh, I could, was comparing it to the M three because mm -hmm. it's such a comparison, and the RS four and the yeah. ISF. Like yeah, those yeah, were yeah. like the four sedans at the time. And I remember. I I only remember this quote because Ryan Dunn actually uh, he texted me and was like, "This is the greatest thing I've ever read." And like I thought Ryan Dunn was really cool. Yeah. And I was really stoked that he had hit, hit me up on it. But uh, he was a sweet guy. Man. I I know it's I so sad. It. Ryan was and he was a real car guy. Like yeah. I I spent a, the way I met him was at um at Barrett Jackson with uh, Jared Dienda and I spent the whole day with him. Uh, on the auction block, and we were just talking about all the cars. Yeah, and we saw a Countach go off the auction at twenty nine thousand dollars. Come on, yeah. how fuck? And was he it? and uh, I, mean, I don't it, know the full detail of it, but yo, know, it was it two. Be fine. It, it was like two thousand eight. It was yeah. like people didn't really care about that car, and he got so bummed because he, we didn't see it roll over the block. We just saw it afterwards, yeah. and he was like, "I would have bought that." Yeah, you know. But uh, he was a super rad guy. But holy I, shit, there you go. 2009 C63, 23 grand. Mm -hmm. That's a great <laughs> car. Really fun. Yeah, car. they're cheap. But they're I said they're... I was like I was comparing it, and I was like, the, if the M3 is like a Muay Thai like kickboxer, yeah, like the, the you know the, the C63 is just a fucking drunken barroom brawler. Oh yeah. And because of that, it's a better car. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's just like because you you have to be on track to enjoy the M3. You can enjoy. A C63 in traffic in New York City. Yeah. They're like, fucking It's just such rowdy. a fun car. Klaus Even Edensberger the, took one on Bull Run and installed, that, yeah. you remember he installed yeah, a smoke screen in it? Yeah. It was the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. It wasn't that it was installed. It was that he used it on the highway. I and feel it was like the that, most dangerous thing I've ever seen someone do. I feel like that era of like <laughs> automotive is gone. Oh, yeah. Like the gumball, Bull Run, like that it's whole era not is celebrated. Just gone. Yeah. yeah. And Robbie Gordon with his fucking Jeep. Oh, yeah. 
the, that video of Robbie, Robbie, don't, Robbie, <laughs> Robbie, don't. I mean, it's it's a crazy yeah. video. It's bad when you put a bunch of car guys like all together because mm-hmm. everyone's just trying to totally outdo each other. Yeah. Mob mentality, like and now everyone has a cell phone with a camera, yeah. so there's you, you, it's crazy. More likely to get uh, you know recorded and put yeah. up on like YouTube. Also, and like, like, and this? I have to admit, like as I've gotten older, like I drive. Oh, yeah. So conservative. Me too. I'm like, you know I'm what I do now? I take my bicycle out on the be- beach bike path and mm-hmm. I swerve in between tourists and I get Yo. it out there. I ride like a dick. Dude, the bike path in Venice is sketchy as hell. With the you, bird scooters? Do you know, do you know Alex uh, Bernou Bernstein? Yeah. Yo, we were riding and Alex hit a kid at like, we were like full tilt pedaling and this kid just was like, I, you know, like you watch children and like they, they, have, they, they have no concept <laughs> of direction, right? Yeah. So he's like, just, it's like he's playing football. He's like, boom, 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 up right. Like he's just like <laughs> juking and jiving and ends up just stepping in front of Alex oh, and Alex no. is pedaling at like 20 miles an hour and wrecks this kid, oh. wrecks him, takes him down and he... He, I mean, he was with his mom, and he's probably like eight years old. Ooh. And uh, he gets up. He was like a big kid. He was portly. Yeah. And uh, he gets up, and we're like, "Oh my, are you okay? like?" We thought we he killed yeah, him. Yeah. Right? And he gets up, and it was me, uh, Alex, and Ashley. And the minute he sees Ashley, he like sucks the tears back in, <laughs> and he's like, oh, oh, "Okay." And I was like, "You are the." coolest kid ever <laughs> like because i see what you're doing right now and like that happened to me when i was a kid like i get that i respect that suck those tears in that's cool you cry later like the rest of us do <laughs> yeah the, the bike path is gnarly though you can you, you can get hurt get fucked up. and get now hurt. with the bird scooters dude, i hate bird scooters i do too except when i'm seeing someone else eat shit on one and then i love bird <laughs> do you scooters. follow bird graveyard yes uh, it's it the a great greatest. instagram but, i live on know, the canal so i find them in the canals in all the, the time <laughs> I'll be like walking, yeah. and be like oh, they're like they're still blinking, and I'm yeah. like, oh, it's pretty good. They're waterproof. Well, I can see the bike path from my place, and I see there's a section of bike path where it it bends in a little bit, and s- some sand gets cut. Oh, that's nice. And a little oh, washout. Oh, it's good. People yeah. just oof, they sail. I don't hate the bird scooters for people riding them. Although I will say, like, there's a like. Some people like you can barely ride a bicycle. You shouldn't be allowed on an electric scooter. <laughs> yeah. Like balance is a thing that is bike clearly path, not given to everyone. The bike path is like a highway in which no drivers have driven a car at all in the last ten yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did this when I was a kid. What's what could it what could possibly yeah. happen? But there's that. But the thing I hate is that they're like litter. Yeah. Like I walk they're, out of my house and they're like just like leaned up against my garage yeah. and it's just like there's it's ridiculous. But Dude, whatever. what happens at ten PM and the caravan of trucks that come collect all of them? I is kind crazy. of I kind of appreciate the cottage industry that's yeah. been created around that though. Yeah, yeah. Cool. The hustle. But you get paid for charging, anyway, right? Yeah. Let's be honest. You do, do yeah. Do people want to listen talking about bird scooters yep. we'll keep moving you yep. mobility bro this is a mobility Mobil- it is a mobility <laughs> show <laughs> you so, have to involve if you say mobility bird... every automaker will spend money with you now is there a uh is there a bird scooter in gym kind of 10 we can segue to that no there's not but there's a segue there's a tell segue. me though that's a tradition at this point right <laughs> that is and we we kind of retired it there hadn't been one since gym kind of six so the gorilla because i was kind of like over it now gym six were the cops oh right yeah okay i was kind of over it and i just felt like we'd done it too much but with 10 being i don't want to say the last gym Kana, but like there'll never be a gym Kana 11 i don't know so you're just gonna go to 12 is that what yeah, that means just, it's <laughs> fucks <laughs> it's like for the second, we go past 11 the we second go to 12. farewell tour <laughs> no i just uh, he's over it uh out of locations to push the limits of no it's not even that i just think that like with anything you do you just want to do something different totally and like we create a formula and we stuck to that formula mm-hmm. for 10 years yeah and um now you've got this pickup truck thing that looks pretty which is rad. rad and like i'll be honest is that like, the same underneath as the mustang basically no, uh, the drivetrain is yeah. in terms of from transmission back. So it's like that Sedev, it's like yeah, crazy all wheel drive. It's a Sedev, thing. Um, yeah. like pneumatic control all wheel drive, um, which is like a center box. That so it's it's sort of more similar to like a four by four setup mm. than a traditional like all wheel drive setup because it's got like half shafts that run front and back. Um, so the um, I think that the uh, I think that the big piece is that. That car is really rad. Um, the engine it's really sick. I don't know if you saw that, but it's actually in the at, truck. It's out of the GT prototype car. So it was the engine that they like the used, Daytona prototype. Yeah, car? it's oh. what they used to prototype for winning Le Mans. Oh, so which is kind of cool. Cool. Um, Detroit Speed built it. Oh yeah, I uh, love Detroit you, Speed. Like I, I know I, them. I'll be the Tuckers are yeah, amazing Kyle, people. Chris over there, everyone's great. Kyle Stacy, they yeah. rule, dude. They, I drove they, all their cars. I went down there and drove like six of their cars. Yeah. Every one of them was incredible. Well, like I mean, I 
I love building my own cars and I've been around a lot of really cool built cars and then I saw theirs and I just realized like wow I didn't even think you could put that much detail into yeah, building yeah. a car yeah I mean they have like a million dollar plus gen 1 Camaro that they've been building for a customer forever yeah. Is it and it's Mo? just Mo, there's this guy Mo who spent like three million dollars with them. It's just a, it's just incredible. And then they brought their uh, Gen Three, um, uh, the IROC. Yeah, the, yeah, to the the blue uh, one. Yeah, to, uh, they brought it. They brought it to SEMA just to do burnouts in our booth. At <laughs> I think SEMA. they raced it in Optima. So yeah, then they raced Optima. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they were like, we they brought it out early for that, and it was super cool to like see that, that. IROC. And, and Kyle threw down so hard, and it's like cool to see. Like a owner of a company like that and a builder like still be able to like wheel a car. Yeah. That thing is really rad. So the anyway, Tuckers fucking rule. Yeah, uh, they're, they're they're great. They're awesome. And they so they built Hoonah Truck. Um, so it it does share some things, uh, but yeah, you can look at like the rear frame setup that they built, and it's like modular. So like if we it looks like a if full we, size slot car. Yeah, <laughs> if we crash the car, we can actually repair sections of the chassis instead of having to re- mm, instead of having to awesome. do the whole thing because that convenient for Jim Connor production <laughs> yeah I mean it, you know the thing is is that like a lot goes into those films and if the car goes down like we're mm. we're literally just like lighting money on fire yeah I mean it's it just because you've got 80 to 120 people just standing there on their phones while yeah, we're like yeah. waiting for the car at to get some fixed. location you so paid like, to shut down yeah and we explain that and sometimes you move you lose your window so it's yeah. like the cops are like, yeah, you got you got another twenty minutes. If you can't make it work, we got to open this back up, and you're done. Yeah, yeah, you know. So we have lost locations because of that in the past. Um, but yeah, no, this is cool. It's uh, I I think the Unicorn is still my favorite car that we've ever built for the films. It's just it's just so incredible. Yeah. But from a build point of view, I think that this is the best car we've ever built. Like just build in terms wise, of a quality it's just vehicle. Insane. And not that the Unicorn is in quality too, but like. There's just that extra level with this one that's mm. really, really nuts. But the Hoonicorn just looks so tough yeah, to me. That's a correct vehicle. It just looks right. Yeah. I had the seating position, all of that. Like the seating yeah. position of trucks a little awkward. Yeah, it's but, a single cab. What are you gonna do? You're yeah, so I told limited. Him, I told him to get a super cab, but whatever. So the, you know what would have made that work? Center seat, center driving position is how you would have mm, made that rowdy. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. You so seen busy, one of, busy motos doing the center yeah, seat no, came he, in. He brought that by our shop. We I drove a, we, it. We it's did a fucking build bio cool, on man. It. Yeah. No. He's it, apparently everything I've heard about is it's a really good driver's car. It like, is. If you it's like nice. being on track. It's yeah. It's very fun. I drove it at Buttonwillow. It was really fun. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, I, what I, my favorite thing about you is your ambition in shutting down hard to get locations, like the seven ten freeway and shit. Was it the seven ten? I think it was. We shut there. down the one hundred five one ten interchange, <laughs> yeah. which is the largest interchange yeah. in America. That's the one from uh, the movie Speed, by the way. In case mm. anyone out there is wondering, where they jump the bus, that's yeah. that's that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, San Francisco is what opened that all up for us. When we filmed Jim Connor 5, we had no idea we could do that kind of stuff. Because up until Jim 5, it was like, you know, it was like ports. Tracks or ports, ports or ports closed or like, places. Or, yeah, I mean, the track in, in that we shot in in France, like, hadn't been used in like 50 years. The one with the bank thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so yeah. rad. That was that a cool, was that, the, so the, the, the ramp was cool. Yeah, yeah, that was neat. And, um... You well, know, and then, then, and then, it just and then became four, a, we one did, upping the location. Right. Well, five was like, I mean, five was incredible. And one of the reasons that that happened was uh, we had hired a location scout who actually was working on the Avengers film mm. or Iron Man or one of those two. And he had already, they were supposed to shoot it in San Francisco. So he knew a bunch of locations that were. Permanent could be shut down. Yeah. So we were like talking. He's like, well, what about the, uh, what about the Bay Bridge? And I was like, <laughs> He's like, no, I mean, like, if you want it, we could probably make it work. And, like, that was the beginning of, like, this, like, childhood dream. Like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you, like, look at things. You're like, oh, how cool it would be to do that there yeah. or do that there, you know? And, like, then all of a sudden it became real that we could drive around cities and be like, oh, what if we did this here? That, that's what I love there. about your brand and entity in general is you guys just play. Like, you just have fun. Like, what if we built this cart? What if we set up a donut booth at SEMA? What if we jump this or slid this or build yeah. a fucking muscle car that has, like, all-wheel drive, like, rally properties? Everything about it is just, like, what if, and you just do it. It's the shit. And, and that's, I mean, it's it came out of, like, this mentality that, like, motorsports and racing got way too stiff. And, like, I get mm-hmm. it, because, like, I worked on a WRC team racing in FIA, like, top level, and everything matters and like it becomes really serious and people get really pissed and sponsors mm-hmm. get really pissed and you get into this thing where like you go home at night and you're you didn't have fun 
and like you then you start to think about it. You're you like, know, I had the fun job, but it's not fun. Like, well, yeah. what the fuck happened here? Yeah. Like, and I and I think like this is probably one thing that might resonate with like people who are listening is like if you're working a job and you look at us and you think to yourselves like, oh, I'm a I'm a plumber and I'm an electrician. My job sucks. These guys' jobs is great. It's not actually always true because it still sometimes can be a job. It's great when it's and, edited down to 10 minutes a week. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of it's a lot of work and a lot a lot of it, like there's still like clients who are ex- like our sponsors who are expecting something and you screw up and you got to deal with that and all of that. And uh, I think that that's really, really, it, you know, you really see that in motorsports. Mm-hmm. You see drivers who forget why they got into this and it all becomes about like the business of racing and we wanted Hoonigan to be the exact opposite of that. Yeah. We wanted Hoonigan to be a place where you could take your race car and come have fun. You know, and it's like you watch like what we've done in the yard on the YouTube show and it's like you got trophy truck guys coming out and crashing like, into containers <laughs> yeah. and like the parental boys and like, you know, and just this crazy stuff and like getting to watch people use vehicles in different ways because I always go back to like, what would 12 year old you do? Would 12 year old you like be worried about conserving tires and doing all of this? And I love that part of motor sports but there needs to be a fun side of it as well yeah you know i wish i could have afforded to like do something real crazy in my car i couldn't afford to fucking smash into your containers Dude. oh yeah, yeah, yeah but like we, that's why we built shit car we built yeah, a 300 yeah, yeah. Our bmw that we've all like i mean it's made everyone in the building a better driver because you just learn to like crash it and yeah. get past it and you lose some of that fear of driving in a certain yeah, way yeah. and um, you know, I think that that's something that like the drift culture has brought to motorsports in a really cool way is like those kids treat their cars like they're disposable. They really do. And that's something that even I have a hard struggle doing because I come from a different era mm-hmm. where like I came out of like car shows and where you build these nice things and these kids, the cars are disposable and there's something really cool about that because the car is a tool instead of like being a precious item. Well, yeah. that's, we see it in, uh, you see it in cheap racing now too. There's a lot of affordable, you know, racing where people don't really give a shit what the car looks like yep. and bump it into each other in E30s and stuff like that. And no, I mean, I think thing, helpful things too. like lemons and all yeah. that stuff has just opened up like a whole yeah. new world. I mean, and it's been happening in other areas like, you know, Scandinavia has been doing folk cross and oh, you know, yeah. folk racing forever. Is that and, where like, you can buy anyone's car for like yeah, 400 bucks yeah, or whatever yeah. it is? You yeah. can petition like $500 yeah. and you can buy their car so that way it prevents people from making too nice of a car but right. that's the reason why the Scandos are so good at rally because yeah. they've been doing it since they were like 12, yeah. you know? So let's, uh, we got a lot of questions. We'll get through as many as we can. I don't want, I can't, uh, we can't fucking keep Brian all night. Can you zoom in on those, Zach? I cannot see. Um, we got a bunch. What happened to Future Hurt? Man, uh, this is, is all going to be real inside baseball. Yeah. So there's just a guy who used to work at our, our company who was not hurt, who doesn't work at our company oh, anymore. Right. So he's fucking and, and, and it's, it's one of those things that like, Oh, we can do, I'm not going to address that, but I'm going to address this is that it's, it's a hard thing. I think for people on YouTube to understand that like we are a business, <laughs> right. And like yeah. people come and go. Yeah. And, um, actually, uh, we've had a, we have an employee who's leaving shortly and we're all really bummed that he's leaving, but you know, he just, he wants to do something different with his yeah. life. And like, that happens like yeah. we all come and go from jobs i've come and gone from jobs and but people it's like see you and ken are permanent yeah Anyone and else? probably hurt and but maybe like hurt. but like there's just a there is it's a family atmosphere and what happens on the show but then at the same time if you leave and you go do something different like you don't get to like leave your new job to come back and hang out with <laughs> yeah, us yeah so and sometimes you do but you know but that's it but yeah i yeah. mean you know like it happens and, and honestly like we've never i think everyone wants drama and like there hasn't been like yeah. we yeah sometimes you get a little bit of friction when people leave but Welcome like to reality TV but I love everyone who's worked for us and has left it's all been whatever all right. so including Gary Scotto how do you feel about potato chip seats uh, what are those uh, the, like the buckets no it was a uh, it was a car uh, that was at SEMA that had uh, carbon fiber uh, like like Kirky style seats uh-huh. and. Uh, in the end, like the owner was pretty bummed that we made fun of his seats, but but it was actually kind of a real bummer because his car was really really sick. He had uh, this S two thousand with a two J or one J in it, and uh, it was really really nice build. But it was sort of this ongoing theme of when we were walking around SEMA, like 
uh, like a lot of cars had Kirky. A lot of cars had Kirkies in them. Yeah, and had like thin, like you know, drag race style seats. Yeah, and it like had kind of become this like, like a goof. theme. Oh yeah, and no, it had become this like weird theme. It seemed like you always see like weird trends. Like tr- why yeah. all of a sudden are people running Kirkies and like these mm-hmm. uh, these seats were made by a company called like Ultra Carbon or something. But and they were like a carbon fiber seat, and we were kind of just joking on like this trend that had come out, and we referred to them oh, as potato chips because they were thin. But no. and it ended up kind of like getting out of like blowing out of proportion for the people whose car it was and the people who made the seats and we didn't really mean it that way yeah. it was just kind of one of those things and I you know how things, get, things get edited down it's going to be full of fucking memes and inside yeah, jokes so. so Dominic says uh, thanks for the recent car advice email response you're welcome what do we like uh, what do I like most about my Safari 911 fucking everything it's basically everything I like about Raptors and everything I like about Porsches mashed into one car yeah so I'm super bummed because we. I was going to get to this, which was when I bought my 911, they were super cheap. Yeah. And C4s were even cheaper. Yeah. You, no could, buy, you could buy them. C4s for sub 10 grand yeah. with a less than 100,000 miles on them. So I found a black one for 8,500 bucks and I was like, I'm going to buy it and build it into a Safari build. Yeah. And then I just didn't because like something came in the way. And I so regret that because I would love a Safari 911. You don't need the all-wheel drive No, at all. I know you don't, but, but I was just saying I was going to get them because they were yeah, cheap yeah, at the time. And I yeah. was like, oh, it would be a really cool rally project. And now I couldn't afford one. It It's it's as great as you – just because I've just been having it on the street. I haven't yeah, really yeah, gone yeah. off-road yet. It's as great as you can imagine it is. You should come down. We got like a little dirt thing behind the shop. Really? That we're going to try what? to permit out to do some testing oh, with, our, really? with our bug because we built a Baja bug. Oh, I'll, I would definitely Maybe come this fuck weekend, around that. So I'll let you know. You oh, yeah, definitely. Down. Definitely. That's that's an easy one. Um, let's see. A bunch of people have uh, thoughts on an 03 Forester non-turbo. No, uh, just not a good car. Um, a couple of people have said thank you for things, and I appreciate that. I'm not going to read them all off. Scott, if you could pick off one car from a build breakout in a Shred around the yard. What would you pick? Hmm. Um. Probably that. St- we had a Starion come in. Oh, that was. Oh, I know that one. Or John, Conquest. John. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. From Optima yes. uh, Street Challenge. Like that car is just amazing. I drove that it's car. Just amazing. It and I don't even know if incredible. I want to shred in the yard. It's just one of my favorite cars that's that's come in. That guy worked at a GM Advanced Composites yeah. or GM I, I actually, something. I wasn't even there that day, and the Starion is one of my favorite cars. Like that is the best. It's Starion the first in the world. car I ever did a donut in, so <laughs> I ha- it has a special place for me. Yeah, no, that car is the greatest. I have a one take with that car in the canyons. It's incredible. Do you know Tavers? Do you know Freddy? Freddy Hernandez who asked this question. By the way, for Tavers, like, who do you need to bribe to bring the Lamborghini uh, by for Build Bio? Like, I, do, do you know him? Yeah, I, I, I don't know him personally, but I've watched some he of his stuff. He buys the worst cars he ever buy, and I, fixes I, I, them. I love that concept. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, dude, just, you uh, just do just, that. Just, just, just hit, get it hit us up and come by. Let's play. So, yeah, for, cool. I t- and I told Freddy when he fixes that car, I will drive it. So just fucking get that thing out here. Yeah. And we'll do it. He'll do a thing, and I'll do a thing. And yeah, come out here, do a little, do a little LA tour. I love Freddie. So, uh, and uh, thank you for your donation as usual. He fucking he throws cash at us. Yeah, I appreciate I see that. that. I know he. This Freddie's is, he always does. He's it. a he big supporter, dude. He's I, a big yeah, supporter. He's doing very that. well, though. I appreciate that. I, and one thing, just because I'm, I'm a tangent from this right now, like I think one thing as all of us. It's, it's weird is like YouTubers. Mm. I don't really like that term, but me it, either. But because is, because we do is. a lot more than YouTube. When we have an Amazon show, we do stuff on Instagram, we do stuff on Twitch, whatever, right? But we're content makers, and and some of it ends up on YouTube. But I do think that it's important that a lot of us uh, work together in yeah. some ways because like we're not that we're actually a really small group on YouTube. Yeah, like it's the like automotive world people. is really small. The numbers that we actually reach in the cosmic scheme of things are like small compared to, let's say, cosmetics. Yeah, and it's like we can all be bigger if we work together on a lot of that stuff. So it's like we we've always been wanting to work more with other people. We work with like Adam LZ and like Cletus and guys like that. But like, yeah, if you're a YouTuber and you're putting together stuff, like hit us up. We always yeah. like working with other YouTubers. Speaking of YouTubers, you know that Tyler Hoover guy, Hoovy's Garage. You know him. He apparently just. He, he did a thing where he buried a LeBaron for a year and then dug it out what and year? started like an 80s one, I think. Oh, sick. He just buried himself inside of his Range Rover as a video, like a goof. Wow. Look, By I the buried way, my Range Rover with me inside. Don't do that. That sounds like a terrible idea. Don't do that at all. I, I love I've you, never, but I've never heard of this channel. That is a bad idea. Does he have like a bunch of heavy machinery? 
I, I guess. Because if so, he should use it to build jumps <laughs> yeah. instead of burying shit. I'm just saying. Yeah, I jumped my Range Rover off of a jump I built is better than my That's bury. Yeah. Uh, Steven says, will early WRXs ever be worth any money? I, I Probably with low miles. Well, I mean, the problem is right now is they definitely are hitting this like super low spot. Yeah, like yes. You can get them really, really cheap. Um, but enough people crash them. And enough people write them off, and then they become valuable again. You need, I mean, you need to find that one old white guy's car who's, and I guess it doesn't even have to be white, but the one old guy's yeah, car, right, the right, last, right, about race. the last stock, Yo, you know. The other day, Hurt saw a, like a like a seventy five year old lady driving a, a like a mint Evo nine. Hell yeah! And I was like, <laughs> that's amazing. I tried to buy. I saw like an old lady driving a, a mint MR two turbo in Santa Barbara, and I p- tried to buy it off her right then and there. She wouldn't sell. Do but you that, fit in an MR2? Yeah, kind of, a uh-huh. little bit. But but the, that same car just sold on Bring a Trailer. That very car I tried to buy off wow. that lady just sold on Bring a Trailer no for way. like like twelve grand or fourteen grand or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was fresh. It was fresh. It was like first owner was like but, a middle aged woman in Santa Barbara. I was like, yep. <laughs> by the way, I uh, talking about Bring a Trailer. I tried to sell my truck on Bring a Trailer, and they like they haven't even replied back to me. <laughs> the one you drove here, yeah, the F three hundred and fifty, because it's it's a like it's a really clean old diesel F three hundred and fifty, which yeah. like is actually those those things have gone through the roof. On you what should just worth. raffle it off. Yeah, that's another idea. Yeah, you so, can make a lot. I, of I had it on eBay, and someone bid on it, and then they went completely like they won the bid. Yeah, and then they just went radio silent. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and eBay's like, yeah, I guess you can relist it. We won't charge you the listing fees. I'm like, oh, that's kind of annoying because there was like other things involved. Yeah, in it. fuck out of here. Anyway, uh, David says, do we think the front engine rear drive platform has reached its peak in terms of acceleration and track performance? Example, the 750 horsepower Corvette and next gen is mid engine. I mean, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. The I mean, every every front engine Ferrari seems to be hairier and hairier than the one before it. Have you driven a new ZR1, Scotto? I haven't. This is the Fuck thing. me. I haven't driven a lot of press cars recently. The most recent press car that I drove, I'll say that maybe like a Hellcat or something. Yeah. Like I haven't, I haven't well, gotten there you a, go. my well, hands well, on pro- a lot. few problems with traction there. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. The new oh, yeah, ZR1 a, is like, all right, we can fucking stop now. Yeah. He's 750, 750. I remember when we first started getting into the 600s, think, especially like 600 Mercedes. Yeah, and you're yeah. Like, I don't know if you need that. <laughs> so no, the ZR1 wants to jump out of its own tires. It's really crazy. The the horsepower thing's wild because when I was a kid, if you had 400 horsepower, you were king mm-hmm. of the block. Oh, dude, mm-hmm. yeah. And now, if you don't have anything more than a thousand, like <laughs> the it's internet's like, really fuck people. But which is weird because like my Nova has probably just under 700. It's and a it's ton. a monster. Yeah, yeah. It's a it ton. is a monster. Yeah, like the internet. It's the all. It's yeah. all the internet. We know. We know people who've driven cars like that. We know yeah. that LS swaps are good. They're not boring. They're good. No, LS swaps are great. Yeah, I don't we, have any. Yeah, but they're great because they're simple. Yeah. and you can find parts at Pep Boys to fix your car. Yeah, which is rad. Yeah, they work properly. Yeah. And we know that 500 horsepower is a bunch. Yeah, I'm yeah. so sick of the the everyone hating LS swaps thing. It's so annoying. It's to because me. you see them a lot on the internet, but in yeah. person you don't see them. And they're, in and person, they're, if they're, you see an LS swap two forty, you go, "All right, that's fucking right." But it's also yeah, like it just it's a weird. It's become this like instant response, and it's such a like lemmings thing. So if you're yeah. in the forums right now and you're shitting on someone or you're in comments or whatever about having an LS, you're just a lemming because yeah. like you're just saying it because the other guy's saying. It. And like, yeah. look, I do appreciate weird swaps, but weird swaps are hard to do. They are usually not that reliable. And it takes a lot more money to do it. Yeah. And if you just want to build a reliable 350, 400 horsepower car, yeah. like an, an LS is fits in everything. It's a tight package, which is what makes it so good. Well, the, the commenters yeah. act like they're at a show with a magician and he's doing the same trick. And they're like, do a different trick. It's like, yeah. no, someone had to build this car. Yeah. Like, you're not an audience to just a show that's very simple. Like this is someone built this project and it has to work and run and race and do burnouts or drift or whatever. Yeah. It's not, they're just like bored of seeing it, but it's like, that's not my problem. And I get it. I mean, I get that people get bored of seeing the same thing over and over again. Like you said about RWBs before. Yeah. Like are the RWB market seems so overly saturated. Yeah. There's probably 40 in all of America, <laughs> yeah. but, all, but, but every, 30 of them are in Los Angeles. Yeah. And, so, and every single one of them gets a lot of media coverage. Yeah. I man, he's gonna fucking die soon. He is. He oh, does don't not, say that. I love he, Nakai. He does, I do too. But he does not take care of himself. Quick, quick Nakai story <laughs> that I love because I I love staying what, up for three days at the time yeah, and smoking but I, a carton of cigarettes while you're doing it doesn't seem. Healthy. But I love what Nakai's about. So when we were when they were building my car, it was Rensport, 
at uh, Laguna, right? Mm-hmm. So we decide that we are going to go check out Rent Sport while we're there. So we're like, and I actually stayed and built my car with Nakai because I had nothing else. To, I went up there and I'm like, I'm not just gonna like sit here and watch you. Yeah. So he was like, cut, cut my, cut some of my own fenders off, like help them line stuff up, put all that stuff together. And there was like a bunch of other stuff that I had to do to the car anyway. And we were like, okay, we're gonna go to Rent Sport today. And we were there for like an hour and a half. And this is like, he had like no English at this point. Yeah. His vocabulary. And he just like came up to me. He's like, we go work car now, right? <laughs> like he didn't even want to be there. We're at like the greatest Porsche event yeah. in the world. And he was like, can we go back and work on your car now? And we left and went back to work on my car. Because he just didn't care about yeah. anything other than like that. He likes building cars. He's it's a, what he a likes singularly there. focused Very person. singularly focused yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, if, you know, and they all, if it's not him, it's the end of it, right? I mean, it's still crazy because it's like they never expanded to like, Nine nine sixes. Or, I mean, right. they've done like a like a few things like that beetle, which Tanner, <laughs> I love you. That thing's ugly. Um, but like you know, they've done a lot of other things um, that they you know I think were they tried, but like they've really just stayed true. It's like, yeah, it's like air cooled. It, it works. It. it looks great. And I'll admit, there's a lot of the new ones that have come out that I don't like. They kind of became a car show car mm-hmm. instead of like a driver's car. Um, you well, know. but Tim is doing that. BB uh, the RWB yeah, yeah. prep thing good. where he actually changes the suspension geometries yep. to make them like work yep. properly. Which well, is that's good. that started with my car because KW they rebuilt uh, the struts from my car yeah. so that they were shorter body struts, yeah. so I'd actually have a bit of travel because I was basically riding on bump stops for the first year. I yeah, had the and car. if you if you if you just run a standard suspension geometry with a crazy dish, mm. the, the geometries are all. Well, fucked. also realize my car is a turbo. So it already was yeah, wider because yeah. it's it's not and but these guys are building cars on non turbos and they're yeah. doing these crazy offsets. It probably drives like and horrible. Your wheels sitting so much farther out from your braking and like just everything on it. You're just gonna destroy yeah. your wheel hubs. Yeah. It's gonna be a fucking disaster. Uh Scotto, any chance of throwback shirts to the original T shirt line? Yes, we're gonna do we do them every year for Black Friday. Each one of us uh, picks our favorite shirt and we recreate it. Uh as for cease and desist shirt designs, uh uh, I think we might be over three now. I think we might be in the four or five. Um, my uh, my whole thing with that is like, I kind of take it as a badge of honor. Mm. So Steve Rocco from World Industries used to frame all his cease and desist. <laughs> and I, uh, I, like I said, if you ever you haven't watched that movie, it's the man who sold the world. Uh, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen it's, that. It's about Steve Rocco of World Industries oh, really? and how he I'll just like flip skateboarding upside down. You can find it on YouTube. Okay, so. cool. Yeah. I'll check that out. Uh, Ariel says, "I know the Ghibli stinks, but is a 2015 CPO Ghibli with less than thirty thousand miles a buy at twenty five thousand dollars." No, but you couldn't what, what give you me want? one. You yeah. literally couldn't give me one for I free. I haven't driven. They, I like how they look, though. They're awful. They're that bad, yes, huh? They're awful. The <laughs> only car to break down during a press drive. <laughs> you couldn't give me one for free. Seriously. Uh, I mean, and certainly not one that's three years old. Uh, Nick says a replacement car for my dad, my, my fiance's five speed Scion TC, manual only, front or all wheel drive, doesn't have to be fast. Uh, Fiesta ST. Yeah, anyone else? Fiesta ST. Fiesta ST is pretty damn good. They're good. It's a pretty good car. And I have to, I'm a Volkswagen kid, but I actually think that Ford has passed VW on just a good pr- driver's car. The yeah. new Volkswagens are a little soft. They are. The mm. controls are really light. Every yeah. controls Steer- are too light. Steering is the most important thing in the car. Fords have like the, the sharpest steering, steering right yeah. now. Yeah. The, uh, the Focus and the Fiesta both have sharp, really sharp steering. Peter says, when will we see Team Hoonigan in a lemons race? And why are you choosing the Rolls as your car? Uh, <laughs> I love that I love, drift Rolls. I, that I, thing I, is rad. I love that connection that they were like, and why are you choosing the car that I'm <laughs> yeah. telling you you're choosing? I, I appreciate that. You have, uh, these are not the George you were looking for type <laughs> yeah. of uh, w- verbs there. Um, so we are uh we actually did a lemons race uh with jason ellis so we did oh, yeah. it was zach jason ellis and uh Cotto from our team but it wasn't like an official hoonigan thing because we went and drove someone else's car yeah so there was a uh, yokohama had a like a convertible e36 that they had that Standard. no one was driving and they were like hey come and drive it so we want to build a lemons car we'll probably do it next year um, but again, I'll take I, a seat if you need an extra driver. No, instead, of, you should build a car because I don't want to build a car. Uh, well, I it's more fun car. if we can go there and compete against like our own crew instead of like all the like lemons pros. So. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't I don't have a shop. I don't want to build a car, but I'll go. 
All right, fine. We'll get you. We'll give you a <laughs> get seat. Me in a car. We'll get you a seat. <laughs> uh, DJ says, "Any plans to do one takes in the Bay Area?" Uh, no, Zach. You? Yes. Yes. Probably December. Email the smoking tire at gmail dot com. Exocet sounds safe. I'm, I'm dead. Exocet with the V six comparison sounds good. Uh, Spencer says, "I'm from Taiwan. I just uh, just get a four AG blacktop ninety five. Oh, all right. He swapped a blacktop into a ninety five Corolla. Fucking cool. good for you, right. sir." Congratulations! I, I black tops are that fun engine. little engines. Sweet. He's got a Whoop. good intake what just noise. Happened? What happened? You fucked it all up, Zach. Where are we? Uh, Camshaft, Chris. I'm looking at a 2000s Infinity M45 versus a Lexus GS430 for Japanese V8 highway cruiser. The Lexus. Yeah. The Lexus is better. Yeah. The Infinity looks cool. I, I I'm with that Infinity for looking cool, but the GS430 is the better car. It just is. The uh, I've been looking at LS 430s. I, I, I they're awesome. I, I kind of want to build an LS 430 drift car, but I should. But I'd, I'd drop in a 2J or something. Just yeah, kinda you, like sh- how you should. I like how they sound. The so, uh, I, I, I like the big body drift cars. The uh, I drove a VIP Lexus oh, yeah. with that with fenders that were like this fucking oh, wide. Yeah. It was hilarious. When Junction Produce first came to America in like 2006, I did. I thought it was like the coolest thing. <laughs> so like, Rides Magazine was like, "Oh, we'll do." We did like this huge feature on like VIP culture. It was it's, fun. It's really rad. Yeah, it's I, very I've fun. always liked those the sense cars. of humor with those cars is great. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas says, "Should I turbo or K20 swap my Integra Type R? I already have the K20 sitting." Well then, well, turbo then, of course. Mm-hmm. Then, then yeah. turbo spend all your money. <laughs> turbo the K twenty, duh. I mean, I assume his Type R has no engine in it, mm-hmm. but yeah, I would yeah, turbo the K twenty. There you go. Adam says, uh, with the unprofessionals meeting with the MCM boys recently in Sydney, is there going to be a crossover episode soon? Uh, we'd love to do some stuff with Mighty Car Mods. Um, I'll be honest, they were kind of one of the first YouTube pages that I really took uh, notice of, and uh, those guys do some rad stuff. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do anything while we were there, so there's nothing coming up, but we want to go back down there for Summer Nats, which is you know, the oh, ultimate, yeah. kind of the ultimate burnout yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about trying to build something to go down there with. I don't know if it'll happen this year, but we will We will make our way back down there. Australia is such like the home of the Hoons. I mean, Have it's, you it's fucked with word. New Zealand yet either? Uh, New Zealand so, is the shit. So dude. I got an invite to go run uh, Leadfoot. Oh yeah, we went. Yeah, so we went I'm, a couple years so ago. It's great. I, so I got an invite to run. If I can get the Audi done in time, the problem is, is that it needs to hit the boat by December, and yeah. I don't think I'll get it Ooh, done. Wow. So we might send our E36 down there instead. Dude, Leadfoot is great. Yeah, that's it's what like I've heard. Goodwood. Have you been to Goodwood? No, I haven't. I'd okay. like to go, but it, I've, seen, I've been to Goodwood. Ba- based on what I've seen from Goodwood, it's a much less official Goodwood. So it's no way ascots. Chiller. No ascots. No ascots. There's no guardrails. No Everybody sits on the hill. No security guards. Like no one that. gives a shit. Like it's great. Yeah. Um, events where people could potentially die at are way bad. That's why I like rally racing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can fly drones spectators, right over the track. They don't give a yeah, fuck. Spectators should be in as much danger as the driver at yeah. all times. That's it, what it makes was a good event. Very, very cool event. Uh, Nicholas says thoughts on Rob Dom's four rotor. So that car actually shares uh, some suspension and drivetrain from the Hunicorn. Oh, it's got the that Sedev thing. I, I, I think so. I know that. The, I think so. Yeah. Um, Rob's a really cool guy. I wish he'd get his car finished, but I can't speak because I don't get my cars done. But it's yeah. taken him really a long time to build. Have you met Rob before? I have. He's, he's a good. He's a really, really yeah, like chill. cool metal kid. I did a. Yeah. I did like a Jeep event, and he was there. And uh, I hung out with him in Vegas. He was very chill. Super. super yeah. Nice I'd kid. like to see it done. It seems like an ambitious project. Good luck, yeah. Rob. It's it's definitely one of those things where it took. It is one of those projects that like the internet doesn't understand that people's lives get in the way yeah. and like other things happen yeah. and like no everyone's so mad that his car isn't done and people give me shit all the time like why are you done I'm like you know I have like a full time job dude it took like, like four th- years for people to yeah. build my fucking fox body and that's yeah. like smart people I was yeah. paying yeah. Uh, I'm building my own shit in the middle of the night all my videos <laughs> are filmed at three in the morning because that's the only time I have to work on my own cars yeah uh, Shane PJ13 I hope that's a Pearl Jam reference uh, no many engineers about to get my degree and looking to work in the auto industry i'm looking to uh, be part of unique and interesting projects I, I, not i don't you probably do i went to school for mechanical engineering did you yeah That's and funny. then i didn't use any of that degree <laughs> and i ended up finishing with journalism so i don't know what to tell you i started <laughs> i don't know where that goes but i i went into mechanical engineering because i wanted to work in the automotive industry and i thought that was a good path in and then i realized i was going to be someone else's uh, number monkey yeah and i didn't want to be that like i didn't want to be the one who was just the like putting the math together for someone else because i wasn't good enough of an engineer to be at the top. Yeah. So I wanted to be the best at 
what I did, so yeah. I did something else. I wanted to design cars, and and people said, yeah. "Well, you have to be a mechanical engineer." I was like, "No, I wanted to be fucking Chip Foose," but no one said go to art center and learn to draw. Dude, I just did a panel with Chip Foose. He's right? great. He's great. He's and the sweetest man in the so world. So him and Wayne Carini, right? And it was so <laughs> and wild. And you, yeah. <laughs> so right. In. So so just real quickly, it was at the SEMA Center stage. Uh, I do panels like every year because I just like you, I, I enjoy talking i like yeah. the sound of my own voice which is great with these headphones mm-hmm. but um no I, <laughs> <laughs> no but i really i i enjoy talking about what we do as a culture and what we do because like beneath all this and behind everything from hoonigan like I, one of my main goals is like keeping car culture alive right like that's just mm-hmm. a huge thing for me and uh so Haggerty did this like thing on like why we drive and i, I did a talk with them oh, i did that last year with so them. they did that with, so they had me talk to the peterson and then they're like hey would you mind sitting on a panel at sema sure no problem and uh like I, I like look I have my my I have an assistant I know it sounds pretentious but I'm a busy guy so my assistant's like hey you have a thing at three o'clock and you need to show up for like twenty minutes before and blah 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 so I was like okay cool I don't look at any of it I just know that I'm talking last year I talked in like you know like behind the cafeteria in a room for like twelve people yeah. right so this year I show up and I get there and I'm like. Uh, and I just see Chip Foos and Wayne and like McKeel from Haggerty, McKeel Haggerty and uh, and Wade Kawasaki from SEMA. And I'm like, uh, am I at the right thing? Like, why am I here to talk with you guys? There's and then the stool they, that says Mr. No, Scott on then, Yeah. And then the stool <laughs> has my name on it. And they introduce everyone and they're like, this is blah, blah, blah. This is what he's done. This is what he's done. And I'm like sitting at the end feeling like I've shown up to the wrong party underdressed. And then they're like, and and. A man who needs no introduction. <laughs> I was like, they're not talking about me. You must have missed up the card that said Chip Foose. Like, I clearly need introduction. I'm not Ken Block. I'm the guy behind the guy. That's so, very but, funny. Yeah, but it was, it was cool. That's a good group. I, Chip's great. I met Chip years ago uh, during, like, the Chip boom with rides when he was doing overhaul and stuff yeah. like that. He's, and he remembered me. Which I thought was well. Re- he's like a true. He's like a real. I human. really respect that. <laughs> he when is. You, he's when a real you, human. When you meet people and they remember you, when they're like way, way outside of the like atmosphere you yeah. live in, and yeah. it's always cool when you're like, and then he's like, "Hey, how you been? I haven't seen you since the magazine days." And I was like, oh, "Wow, yeah, it's weird." I had cool. a very fun night with with all of those guys at SEMA last year at, at a dinner where a lot of wine was served and there was some fun uh. stories thrown around. It was good. Good group, guys. Awesome. Um, but yeah, there, there's uh, I don't know, tips for his engineering. Which I, I would know. say we, we've told people before: just find a shop that or a place that's doing things you were interested in, and to just try to get an internship, try to get an entry level job. Like, yep. you know, you may be overqualified for something, but that's where you'll learn to build and do the cool shit that you want to do. Internships are the most important thing you'll ever do. Because you'll either learn that you don't actually want to do what you thought you wanted to do, which is what happened to me in engineering. I did an internship, and I was like. I don't really. This, <laughs> this isn't what the pamphlet looked like. Yeah. I thought it was going to be driving like race cars. Like this yeah. is not what it is. And then you know, and then I did an internship in in magazine journalism, and I was like, oh my god, I love this. This is yeah. the greatest thing ever. I want to tell stories. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, how effective are racing simulators or practicing driving skills? Very, very. I think very, very. Yeah, yeah, very good. Especially effective for like learning race tracks and stuff like learning that. lines are yeah. really good. Um, and I also think that. Uh, there's obviously an eye hand coordination. I mean, you can see yeah. there are kids coming straight out of like e like e gaming and getting into race cars and actually like being able to put down like a decent lap. Yeah, and although yeah. they've never driven a race car before, yeah, yeah. so I think that that's I think that the whole e gaming thing is something that we all really need to take seriously because I think it's really easy to kind of laugh at it. But like I think that that we're gonna see a whole new crop of drivers that like come up from that way. Yeah, it's I just a lot la- easier to get into it. I didn't. I got into a bit of a tiff with someone from Forza because they had their highest level racing and they're using controllers, and I was like, bro, I give them shit for that all the time. I, yeah. I mean, Forza is like a partner of ours, yeah, but yeah, I give yeah. them. Sh- but the the issue is, is that that is just where it it, it actually has to do more with that the. the you can actually be faster with the controller than with the steering wheel. So if you're act, if you're competitive, the steering wheel is a disadvantage. That's well, fine, wow. but it's not helping you so, practice driving skills. No, and, much. and and that's to win the game. But if you actually yeah. want to learn, getting yourself like a good setup because we actually have some pretty rad sims set up at the building now that we play Forza. We also play a set of Corsa and a few other things on the, it. In so. a set of Corsa, a fan of ours made the Angeles Forest in a set of Corsa. Dude, I just saw that. It's so. Have you rad. driven it? No, I you saw. You have I, to download. It's I, amazing. I saw it on Instagram, and I was like, "Oh my god, Dude, this is so good!" It is 
perfect. You know what's rad about it is now on Sunday morning, I don't have to drive to Malibu anymore. I don't have to deal with that traffic. No, this dude made it, and I my friends got a real nice sim with a manual and a clutch, the real the whole deal. And I got a McLaren F1 GTR and did my loop at an unbelievable speed. And if I get in any new racetrack in a sim, I'm crashing a million times. Uh, Not this. Fucking right around. Because you knew it. Yep. It was perfect. Quick. Was so This good. is kind of like before games got to like real sim level. But uh, the first time I ever drove the Nürburgring, I showed up and uh, Tony Harmer had played it like religiously. Knew it inside out. Yeah. Like he just, we would, and our house was, we lived together in an apartment, which was like the worst five years of my life. But <laughs> I love the kid, but we should have never lived together. Um, but uh, he played it like nonstop and I didn't. So we went to the ring and I took first lap and he gave me rally notes <laughs> for the whole yeah. thing. And I ran a bridge to gantry under under 10 minutes and ran like a 940 or yeah, something yeah. like that with him just giving me notes on yeah. my first lap, which That's was awesome. like the fact that that translates. It's cool, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Uh, last question before we get out of here. Uh, 2018. Wait, we're done? Yeah. Dude, I'm ready to go. 2018 My, wife, my wife's at her, at her parents' house tonight. <laughs> I thought we were talking forever. All night. Let's do this. If you guys want to go all night, let us know. We'll just we can't. We got <laughs> coffee we're, and we're, whiskey. We're just gonna keep it going. 2018 WRX or 2018 GTI coming out of a Tacoma. Uh, I think GTI better. I think the GTI car, is... better looking car, better interior. I'm. I had a Subaru too, but the new ones are. No, I don't, I, fuck. I, no, I'm. Uh, I just heard your sigh. Because I, I, I don't think I would. I don't think I would do either of those cars. I wouldn't mm. either. I'd get the I'd get, I'd get a Fiesta ST For, or a Ford RS, although they don't yeah. sell them anymore. Yeah. Well, RS, RS will be a lot more expensive than those, but I would get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably the GTI between those two. What? It, what what's the other solu- What's the other solution there? An FRS. Dude, used market. I think the, the used, used market. The used, used market. market. There are so a many used, awesome cars. A Focus used. ST probably. I'd probably yeah. rather have a Focus ST. They still make that. Evo 8, Evo 9 all day. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Uh, what Should've is Gymkhana 10 coming out? Uh, Gymkhana 10 will be releasing on Amazon uh, first. Oh, nice. So we're doing like what we're calling like a first look because mm. it still has an official launch on uh, YouTube. So it'll be uh, December 7th on Amazon and then 10 days later, easy number to remember, on YouTube December 17th on, nice. the, on the Hoonigan channel. So And we've got – and then the Amazon show starts – is that what we watched the trailer for earlier? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The, so the actual Amazon show starts uh, on November sixteenth, uh, which is what, like, two weeks like uh, from ten, today. Yeah. Nine, nine days. days. Yeah. Nine so days. wait. Oh shit! It's a week away. It's wow. A week, that's yeah. wild. Coming so yeah. So it's it starts. Wait. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Anyway, um, time is weird. Well, I'm going to I'm going to Baja next week, which oh, sucks because I won't even be able to like watch the show when it comes out. But uh, Jim Connor Files is like. I'm actually really, really stoked how it came out. Like, I think even if you don't like cars, you will you might like the show. The trailer looked really good. We it's, just watched the trailer. It looked awesome. So so quickly on that, like, they came to us. Um, well, actually, I, I went and I, I wrote the treatment and I pitched it to Amazon. And um, for years, people have come to us and been like, hey, you guys should do a, like a reality TV show. And I'm like, we, that's not our thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want, we don't want fake drama. I don't want this to be like an argument between me and Ken and all of that and so on and so on. And uh, in the end, we we pitched this idea to them because we we're like, it's ten years. It, it kind of makes sense. They were like a really good partner because they kind of let us do whatever we wanted. Uh, but it was actually the hardest Jim Connor we ever made, and so many things went wrong that it ended up creating like a really good story. You That's know, because awesome. I, I thought we were gonna have to kind of like force some other things into it to yeah. like just make you it more entertaining. Do that and I don't mean force like. I never want. I mean, we never want to force like drama or moments. But there was definitely this like. It was just like everything was a struggle. Everything kind of like was harder to put together. And it's just kind of cool to see we've been really quiet about how we make the films. We've mm-hmm. never really yeah. done like this is the formula. This is how we do it. And like we really show everything. And in the past, if Jim Connor was coming out, like you didn't even know the location until four days before the video dropped. Yeah. Now, if you watch the Prime stuff, it's the exact opposite. Like you're going to know the tricks we struggled with. You're going to know where the car broke. You're going to know where this happened. You're going to know all the issues and you're going to actually see some of the making of it and then have it come out. And I don't know if that's going to make it better or worse. Like we've had fans say, uh, like, oh, this looks awesome, but I'm going to wait, watch Jim Connor and then go back and watch it. Which well, maybe it, even on demand it, it could world. be whatever, yeah, whatever your experience is, which is what makes video on demand so good. So, but it's it's rad for us to like take something that we developed for YouTube and have someone like Amazon Prime be like, yeah, we're gonna do like a whole show around it, which is it's it's pretty cool to see all of that come together and like 
in I, I think it's going to be a better show than I think a lot of people look at it and they're like, oh, we've seen BTS before, but it's it's really like a different show, and it tells a lot about the story of Ken, which I think is a lot of people don't really know. Like Ken is just an easy target for people to be like, ah, he's this or that, or or there's the kids you just you either absolutely love him or you hate him or whatever. But I think it actually shows a lot more of like the human side of like what Ken is like been going through in his life and like how it's you know it's it's sort of sad in that like he could have probably been a really good race car driver i mean he is a good race car driver but he could have been a really top level race car driver if he had started at the age everyone else starts at yeah, which is like 13 carts at six right yeah. not 37 yeah you know? <laughs> yeah so i'm 38 right now like yeah, i can't yeah. imagine starting. like starting a race car a race car driver career today yeah like yeah. with no previous experience like yeah. I, I can't even imagine with the previous experience i have like i I want to go race cars, but I'll be like some gentleman driver. Like I'm never going to be above that. You yeah. Know? So, dude, that was a fucking good show. Thanks for coming in. I Did you say it. that to all your guests? Yep. Yeah, totally. Yep. Sick. <laughs> I so. So, yeah. No, once you once you start is, taking your phone out, if the I was show's like, fucking, he's over. Because people are texting me because this is the latest we ever go. Yeah. If um if uh if it goes like like this, like a fucking two hour show, it's a good show. Is is this yeah. the longest show you've done? Not ever, but it's it's it probably is the top. 15 or so can we push it to the longest because i hold sure. car stories on the peterson yeah. i have the longest show ever uh, how ever long was that it. I don't know, it was like in it was it was probably only like 95 minutes but they they try to keep I did, it to uh, 60 or something three hours and 40 minutes with joe rogan <laughs> Oh really? Yeah. How was Rogan's show? Great. So I, I, I'll be really he honest. He has these special chairs that you sit in that are better for like long podcasting. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So funny. I um I'll be honest. I uh I I totally overlooked Joe Rogan. So like at a time when others didn't. I or think like now? like right now. Like I I just like he wasn't really in my sphere. Mm. Like and I've listened to some of his podcasts because I love podcasts. Yeah. Um, but. I, I never really gave him that much, and I watched his most recent stand-up that on Netflix. Great. It's it was phenomenal. really, really good. Yeah, it's and then really I went back hour. and I watched a couple of his others, and yeah. now I've been listening to his podcast every day, yeah. and I'm like kind of bummed that like I didn't get on to him earlier. <laughs> That's never but, too late. Yeah, yeah but, but not. But you can just, you're the, the Ken back, Block the racing of good. Joe Rogan listening. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe's a good dude. He 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 means well. He's he's, he's a little a bit of a car guy too, right? Yeah, yeah. He's got. Were you at Were you at last night's event? Steve with Steve Strope or whatever. No, or, oh, yeah. Well, I guess I, he was there because it's like some car that Steve's building for him or something. Oh, like that, I don't, so. I prob possibly. Oh. Joe's Joe has is getting an an Icon FJ. Yeah, not an FJ, a Land Cruiser, an yeah. '80s Land Cruiser from Icon. He's got two 911s, Jonathan Ward, amazing. Uh, a 964, way. and he's got a Shark Works 997 GT3 RS. Have you had Jonathan Ward on the show? A bunch of times. Yeah, he's the best. Oh, wait, so I can come back? Yes. Oh, There's we have this is on business. my. I didn't realize. How, I've been asking you to do the show. I know for like you two have. Years, I know you asshole. have. I know you have. And I'll be honest, like. Uh, I go, do you want to come on the show? And you go, yes. And I go, are you available? This, 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 this. And then you ghost. <laughs> <laughs> just nothing. Nothing. Full I don't ghost. even open it because I don't want you to get the read notification. It's a full like, ghost. Out. Yep. It's just a really busy life. I understand. So. That's why I'm not mad about it. Yeah. it. That's why I'm happy you're here now. And I'm not well, mad when you can't come. We, uh... I want to do. We want to start doing podcasts. You at should. Our place, it's not so hard. We'll have you come down. We can do it. Apparently, you guys can get it done. So I just enjoy this, and I don't have enough time to be in the video content that we do, and mm -hmm. I miss out on that. But I I enjoy this. So I enjoy doing this yeah. more than I enjoy making videos. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. I like this. We have a show idea, which is I think like it's somewhat similar to like in a way of what you do, but we have this sh podcast idea called Good Cop Bad Cop, <laughs> and the whole idea of it is is we go through Craigslist ads, and is oh. it a good cop or a bad cop? Meaning That's like. A cop, to buy, like a cop, the bot. To buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that works. Good cop, bad Great cop. Idea. And some of the shows might end up with me calling the person and trying to buy the car. That totally works. So I like that idea. Just because it's like me and a few of the guys, we just have this car. And then like, but it becomes a history story. Mm -hmm. You know, you find a car and you're like, oh, it's a Mighty Max. Let's talk about the Mitsubishi yeah. Mighty Max and like all these cool things about that you don't know. Totally. Because I have That's this a good show. encyclopedia of like random car knowledge about you, things that don't matter. You are matter. good at coming up with ideas for shit, man. You're the best at it. Now you're just you're just fluffing me, but I yep. appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> no, it. No, you are. Yeah. Thanks for finally making it happen. Yep, yep. Uh, Let me know about the dirt so I can bring the 911 down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For and sure. uh, Radwood is right around the corner. Yeah, we, we will be there. We will go to Radwood. Um, and Peterson, the, which is and the party, which is a cool uh, the party tonight before at my house. Yeah, which you can walk to. And you're still living I, I don't want to give I don't want to give too much away um, because it's not settled yet. But we are trying to do a premiere for Jim Connor 10. Oh, fun. 
that will be open to the public in oh, a really shit. cool type of setting uh, in Los Angeles, like right around like the 15th, 16th kind of thing. So okay. keep your eye out for it. Kind of like just mark that on your calendars because it's an event that I've been wanting to do for 15 years now and it's finally happening. Awesome. Yeah, I'll tell you when we shut the cameras. We shut All this right. off. Well, thanks so. for listening, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You guys. Thank, Thank you for you your everyone. donations. Uh, Brian Scotto of Hoonigan and uh, the Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. You know the fucking drill. Get your own podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. You just need a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally, something to say. Good night.